looky here. Well, looky a duty do. The boys got a new studio. Yep. To all you people listening, go fucking watch. To everybody listening, we got a new studio, baby. We new got- stude. We're able to put the Brian Johnson thing on the table. We got the Brian Johnson logo on the table. Oh, man, where'd y'all get a studio, bro? Y'all? Nigga, we made one, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Invest in yourself, bro. We invested in ourselves. We invested in Spoiler Beans. We made our fucking own studio in the house, nigga. And we set this shit up, bro. And I'm very proud of it. I know. It's, 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 we don't have to move a bed, and we don't have to every time we nope. come in. We, and we're going to uh, have other people shoot their podcasts here, and, and bro, we're going to do the damn thing. We got our own fucking studio in the house. Thank you, Steve Breeze, for moving out. Steve Breeze, we owe you one, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Trey and Vanessa, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Uh, son, how you like it, bro? I like it. Yeah, I like it. It's nice. It's nice. It's uh, Cream walls, yeah. not white walls. They're cream colored, a nice cream. They, they look good. I'm excited to see what this is going to become. We soundproofed it up. We got stuffed animals in the corner. You yeah, guys can't see have, that. We have an audience. We have an audience. We can play to an audience. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, bro. Uh, we're excited. Nigga, we do two a week now. You guys already know this, but we haven't talked about it. But we'll talk about it now. But you're hearing this, and they're like, man, they've been doing two a week for a while. We know. But now we do two a week, bro. And we got bonus shit coming. And we're going to just make sure you guys get everything you want, bro. Yeah. The, for all you true beaners out there. For all you original beans. Because we asked what you wanted. Yeah. And he's like, bro, more episodes. And it's like, oh, that's how you do it, bro. And I, I will say this, man. The, motherfucker, big, the motherfucking biggest podcaster in the universe. Mr. Joe Rogan himself. You guys know who he is. You guys listen to him. You've heard. The Johnny Carson of our time. $100 million Spotify deal. Get the fuck out of here, bro. Pennies to this nigga. You know what I'm saying? That's so how much. He's going to be the first comedic billionaire. Easily. All right? But all that aside, this man was telling me one night in the comedy store after a show about what to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, not what to do. Like, I didn't ask him. He was just, like, saying, like, what he did, right? <laughs> And it wasn't like he was telling. He was just literally saying what he did, but I was taking it in. Like, he was saying how, man, bro, he's like, this is what it is. He's like, we, we control the narrative. We control anything. You can create what you want. He was like, your sketches, you created all those. He's like, that, that's what it's about. Create what you want. He was like, me, man, I created a podcast and just started doing one a week. You know, and then I was like, oh, why don't, you, why don't I do two a week? And then it's like, oh, man, people like that. Why don't I do three a week? And, man, people like that. It's like, oh, why don't I just do it all the time and just do it constantly? And that's what people, you know what I'm saying? And he said that shit, and then he started laughing, like, like he made himself laugh. Like, like, damn, that's all I had to do, and look at me now. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, bro, I took that shit so to heart, bro. I think about it all the time. I know I brought it up to Asana a million yeah. times. that Because we always talk about, like, oh, should we do this kind of bonus stuff, that kind of bonus stuff? And it's like, man, I hope we can look back on this episode and we were right. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, bro, you got to learn from motherfuckers that did it in front of you, bro. Yeah. And it's like... But everybody drops one a week, bro. But mm-hmm. like, nigga, you even the fighter and the kid, my boy Brennan Shaw, bro. I mean, look at him. He's like, bro, drop two a week, drop three a week, do four, four, five a week. You yeah, know what yeah, I'm saying? Like, four podcasts a week. week you know out? what I'm yeah. saying? Joe does probably three to four episodes a week. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Even though maybe some weeks only two come out, but he's every week he's always filming. Right. Uh, yeah, dog. And then the MMA ones, and then the fight companions. You know what I'm saying? Oh my god, yeah. So it's like, yeah, bro. That's what we gonna do, man. Me and Asan are trying to be like that, bro. Me and Asan are trying to fucking come up. And be one of these like your mom's house level podcasts, bro. And they drop two a week, don't they? I think so. I they think, drop no, two no, a week. they drop one a week. They drop one, but yeah. they both have all the other podcasts, so they yeah. they they drop two a week. They drop two a week. So that's what me and Asan are trying to do, because that's what we're figuring out. It's like, oh man, what are the what are the best do? Right. More. Always. They do more. That's what the best do. That's why they're the best. And so we've been giving you, we've been giving y'all what a hundred? How many episodes now, Asan? What are we at? Oh, I I, I don't know the exact count at this point because. I think I, if I had to guess, this is what, 133, 134? This is looking at exactly it right now. Looking we fi- at it right now. To give you context, we tell you all the time when we film, actually film this episode. We filmed this episode the day after we filmed Malibu's Most Wanted. Yep. So it's like. <laughs> it's fucking Tuesday, June 9th. Yeah. <laughs> so whenever you're hearing this, just know that, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we are on episode 132. 132. No, I'm sorry, 133. 133. Okay. 133. Okay, I got it right. Yeah. So, so 133 episodes in, and, and that's where we are now. But just know we, like, you know, we, we've decided, yo, new studio. We pumping out two a week. Spoil the Beans Productions. We're going to, uh, there's two dope beards. Make sure you guys go listen to that podcast. Yeah. Spoil the Beans Productions. Go listen to uh, Asan's Dangerous Brown. You know what I'm saying? If you haven't yet, go subscribe to that. Mm-hmm. But we're going to give you guys more shit, man. We're going to just give you guys more episodes with bone ups episodes with guests. 
we're not gonna, obviously not gonna tell you the guests and the surprises, but we got already got that shit like locked in, man. Right. So we got some fun shit for y'all, bro. So we thank you so much for rocking with us, all the people who are at this moment in time, day, like whoever's listening right now, you are motherfucking day one. Right. I see there's more day the day ones in that. We love you the more. But the day everybody at this point, you are part of the motherfucking new shit. Beans takeover, dog. Take you know over what the I mean? beans. We're taking over, bro. We starting here and we motherfucking gonna do this shit, bro. And we love y'all and thank y'all for rocking with us and just keep fucking doing it. Keep doing what you're doing, telling your friends and stuff, man. We appreciate it. Yeah, we do we do appreciate that. You know uh, uh, like you know, the commenting on the YouTube and like whenever we ask you guys like, hey, give us your favorite poop stories. You guys are fucking great about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you guys <laughs> yeah. are great about responding, man. We appreciate it, and uh, we're only gonna get bigger, bigger, and drop more shit for y'all, bro. It's for y'all. So thank y'all so much for rocking with us. We love to do it. Uh, also, uh, happy Fourth of July. Oh yeah. It's, it's that time. Yep. They're about to have 4th of July in a couple of days. Happy 4th of July. Yeah. Man, go spend some time with your fam and, uh, and uh, don't die. Um, well, yeah, I wonder what this is going to be. Well, I wonder what this year's 4th of July is going to be like. It's going to be, it might be different than a lot of other 4th of Julys. Probably so. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's going to, it's going to be a, it's going to be a different one. Probably so. <laughs> did you do your homework? I did my homework. I watched Malibu's Most Wanted. How was it, buddy? Oh, man. I was in it the moment when they walk up to the candle store and they're walking in the same way. They, that shit was crazy funny. And then you hear Cal Penn talk for the first time. You're like, oh, because it's like, it's crazy. Like, back then, it's like, okay, that's this character, right? It's whatever. But knowing who he is and knowing definitely how he sounds, you know, it's funny then to see him in the context of like, oh, shit, this is an accent. Yeah, it is. That shit's hilarious. It's just really funny. He was doing that fucking brown man accent. Yeah. He didn't have to do it for Helder Kumar. No. No, that's not that. That, that, that progressive movie, movie. Yeah, huh? It was a progressive movie. That movie was very progressive. It was two straight up, usually accented people, right? It was mm-hmm. Indian and Chinese people. And they let them just talk. They let them just talk and they let them get high, mm-hmm. right? It was like, a, you, ne- you never see that, I think, in Hollywood, you never seen those two like that. No, they let it be a stoner comedy. They let yeah. it be a straight-up Pineapple Express. They let it be an actual sto- a Friday. You know what I mean? They let it be a stoner comedy. And I think that's... For that group. Yeah. And, but let them be normal. Mm-hmm. It's nice. But what uh, you know, what's crazy of how good of a comedy that was, and then we'll go back to Malibu's Who's Most Wanted, is... Uh, <laughs> I know we are just talking about that. Is that that was such a good comedy that no one even talks about how... Really talks about, like, oh, wow, they did a lot of things progressive on that one. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. That was, I love that movie. It's a funny ass movie, bro. It's just funny as hell. Uh, stupid ass premise. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is a stupid ass premise. Well, that's what, this is great. Yeah. This They're is, both the premise is, yeah. The premise is hilarious on this. Bro. And Jamie Kennedy knocked that shit out of the park. He's so stupid, man. He is so funny. Yeah. He is so funny. And then Tay Diggs is incredibly funny as well. Those are those are the two funniest. They steal the movie. Those are the two funniest. They steal the, I mean, Tay Diggs is like. What? Yeah. Yeah. Bro, he's such a. He's also such a good actor in real life. Yeah, that's well, that's why Tay Diggs, Tay Diggs like Tay Diggs can act. Yeah, that's what makes Tay, it funny. Tay Diggs can act. In this, he's act. acting. He's he, acting in yeah, this. Yeah, he's the best actor in this. Yeah. For sure. But he's being very funny. Yeah. He's being silly too. That's what uh, me and Sam talked about. It's like, bro, I've seen Tay I knew Tay Diggs could be funny. I've seen him in stuff. I knew he could be funny. In this movie, what makes him special is he's silly. He's like silly. He's not he's not silly in other stuff. He's like super duper silly in this. Yeah, it's uh and it's very stupid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Goofy with his body. Yeah. You know? I'm so funny. They're all good. Uh, the tech, the tech guy who played tech was funny. Uh, he's a Wayne. He's a Wayne's. I saw that. Yeah. He's a Wayne's. Yeah. He I was, was wondering why he was so fucking funny. He was crazy funny. Yo, he's a, it's like for a, it's like, yo, who is this gangster? Uh, yeah. Because who is this guy? Because this guy makes no sense. The dad, I thought Bill Gluckman's funny too. The day I thought the day was funny, bro. I mean, I everyone played their character pretty yeah, well. Yeah, Underwood was great. Underwood, Blair Underwood was that. The team he was, was good. Bad guy. The team was yeah. Team was good. The one of the guy, one of the guys on the team is like this bit role and everything. The guy with the glasses. He's in that seventy show. The white dude, with the ball hit. Oh, well, the two of them, I should say, because yeah, he's he's in a bunch of shit, and then mm-hmm. the the fatter white guy too. He's in a million bunch. things. He's too. in a million things. Yeah. yeah, he's in Heroes. He was in the Stars. That's Born. what Sam said. Sam said he's in Heroes, and I was like, I've seen him in a bunch of other shit. He's yeah. in Stars Born. Yeah, he's a, the, the chauffeur. Yep. Mhm. He sure fucking is. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, man. It was just. It was a good time. Yeah, it was. It was a good time. Uh. Yeah, I, I I I couldn't I can't I can't even think of like, even if I were to be critical of it, it's like this is a movie that knew exactly what it was, 
And it yeah, it'd be hit, impossible to be critical. It's impossible to be critical of this. Yeah. It's like it, so being critical of Joe Dirt. It's like, well, what are you criticizing? Right, <laughs> right. But no, like even like even a comedy like this can miss its mark. But I, I don't feel yeah, like yeah, they this, can try to yeah, yeah. That's it. I don't, feel, I don't feel like it missed its mark at all. Yeah, you know, I feel like it was exactly. Regina Hall's great. Yeah, yeah, she's amazing. She's, she's really hot. hot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that woman even like a. She's hot. She aged even as well. like a. Yeah, like, like she 50. aged well. She's like stupid. She's still stupid hot. She bro. aged well. She's she a great actress. Too. And she's funny. Yeah, she's a great actress. Yeah, and she's had a crazy career. Yeah, she's been in like she's in everything. She's in like the scary movies. She's in all of them. Oh fuck. She's the black girl in all the scary movies. Yo, I never. I like. I just never because I watched the scary movies so long ago. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's a long time. Yeah, I never put it together. Scary movie two, best one. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like the Shreks. Um. <laughs> Now that you, but now that you say it, it's like, oh, I cannot see Regina Hall. Of course, it's, of course, it's her. Oh man, yeah. of course, it's, it's like, her. oh yeah, it's a hundred percent her. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, she's funny, man. Her her career is like, she's been to so much shit. Yeah, she's killed it. She's killed it. She's talented. She's when you're uh, when you're talented and hot, that's un- that's Dude, that is unfair. Uh, 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 it's a great quote I heard. You can do anything you want if you sexy. Yeah. I think I don't know if it was Malcolm X who said it, but somebody said it and I agree with it 100%. Sounds sounds like Malcolm X. <laughs> <laughs> From what I know about him, which is absolutely nothing, that sounds like Malcolm X. Ooh. <laughs> it's not like, actually your your question real quick yeah. before we get out of, out of the intro. Yeah. What's your take on Malcolm X? No, real quick <laughs> because we we do love sports around here. Uh-huh. Two questions. Your take on baseball? Mm-hmm. And what's happening there? Okay. Three questions. I'm sorry. You take on baseball. Okay. Take on the NBA playoffs. And okay. take on what's going on in the UFC right now. Because that's the three things that are happening right now. Baseball first. Okay. Baseball first. Um, it's at this point we're near July 4th, right? I would think at this point, so I'm saying this from June 9th, but I'm saying at this point, even in July, near July 4th, I don't know if there's a plan for baseball to come back. I think the baseball owners are too greedy. Uh, selfish as fuck. Selfish. They lose their sport. Uh, I don't think they understand how on the cusp they are of being a top three sport. Because right now, they're top three sport. Right now. Well, as of 2019, they're In top America, three sport. they are top three sport. I no think, questions asked. I think if they don't play this year. They already have no mar- they already have no stars. No marquee players. There's no like they have like if you love baseball, you're like, oh, okay, of course, like Bryce Harper and Mike Trout are great, but like they're not Who's Derek- LeBron James? Yeah, there's no Derek Jeter. There's no Barry Bonds. There's no there's no star that transcends the sport. Yep. I would say Whereas other sports have multiple stars that I would say the if sport. you know nothing about sports, if you know nothing about sports, there is maybe a 30 to 50% chance you've heard of Bryce Harper. If you know nothing about sports, you know LeBron James. <laughs> you know Tom, Tom Brady. Brady. You, you know, know Pat- Patrick, Patrick Mahomes, Mahomes is getting there. He's getting there. He should if, if you, you know, know Drew Brees. Yeah. But I say more people I more people definitely know Patrick Mahomes than know Bryce Harper. Hey, way more people know Lamar Jackson than, than Bryce, Bryce Harper. Harper. Not even cl- it's not even Close. in the ballpark. Yeah. Um, Russell that. Wilson, yeah, and that's, that's the thing. Aaron Rodgers, you can name all these sports. Damian Lillard, you know what? Russell Westbrook, Kevin Durant, James Steph Harden. Curry, James, James Harden. Harden, Giannis. Now Kawhi, those yeah. guys are marquee superstars. Yeah, where is like where are, where is there even, bro? Where's baseball's Lou Williams? Who? Who? Yeah. Where's their J.R. Smith? Yeah. Uh, th- Where are those kind of stars? This is uh, th- this is an uh, indication of how baseball is hurting. Uh, so you know who won the World Series last year, the Nationals? Yes. Can you name three players? Nope. Can you name one? Somebody good. Okay. Who, who is that? Who's that? Somebody good? Uh, there's there's three I can think of. I'll give you Strasburg. Okay. Um, I know that name right when you said it. I was like, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. But you like you like sports. You know what baseball you know? is now? And you said this yesterday because we watched a mystery movie. Mystery movies are good. Because you don't know anybody's name. Yeah. You, you don't, don't remember to. their name. The whole point is the characters in the story. Yeah. You remember the detective and that's it. Yeah. They have turned baseball into that, which I don't agree with. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Are you, like, you know, you know, you know, the ch- like you, you, people don't even know. I would say the average person doesn't know who Altuve is. They know the Astros cheat. They know the storyline. And if it's a guy who doesn't take his shirt off in front of his wife yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Something like that. They know some vague thing like that. <laughs> It's just you but know you know, I mean? Asan, how much do people know Kawhi Leonard doesn't like smile or laugh compared to 
who even know who Altuve is. Yeah. Not only do you know Kawhi Leonard, you know he doesn't smile. Like you know a personality also, trait about him. Also, you've heard his robotic laugh because it trended. You, you, you've heard, you've heard <laughs> this guy who's a robot, yeah. who's this like robot basketball player. Mm -hmm. He's not even as famous. He's not the most famous. It's not like he's the most famous player. It's like, no, 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 bro. He's like top 10 marquee star. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So I don't know. Baseball, I don't know how you recover from if you don't play. Owners lose. You're all billionaires. Lose a little money this year. Rich fucks. You it, You fucking, like, I, this is just shows the, it's the problem is everything. The system in every facet. In the way we police people, in the way we fucking handle pandemic, in the way we fucking run our entertainment, the system is fucking corrupt as fuck. Yep. Play the game. It's not about you. Also, it is about you because you're losing. You're you're you. Because the baseball owners are thinking, we'll come back next year and we'll make all the money. We'll make again. It's like no, you won't. You're f one. We don't even know if we're allowed back in the stadium. Two, even if you are, you've lost a whole year's worth of new fans in a sport that's already declining. Yep. It's a bad business decision, and baseball, you deserve everything that's about to happen to you for it. Okay, question it number sucks. two. Well, Hold up. Because this ties into question number three, so Go I kind of want to skip to that. Now, this is a prime time for UFC to come in and take that spot. Okay, now this is my question. Why won't they? Because, you know, I don't think they will. Because they're, fu and, and I think they can, because but I don't think they will. Now, the why do you, system is corrupt. They don't want to, like, their stars are realizing that I can, if even if you're not a Conor McGregor level star, like John Jones, if you're John Jones, you who is the Conor McGregor level athlete? athlete. No, I'm not saying John Jones is a better fighter than Conor McGregor. I will admit that probably. You know, I, he is, but that's not, not what we're talking about. Celebrity. He's not a bigger celebrity. That's no. okay. Just so people know, he knows what he's talking about. I think he can get more. If I were to guess, if he were to set up a fight. He would probably get more money than what the UFC is paying him. John Jones? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's like he would be able to get more money. With the promoter? Yeah, absolutely. And and then UFC, uh, like uh, Brendan told us before how they used to have uh, – a, a, they could have, have promotions on their shorts. Before Reebok bought them. Before, yeah. And then now that they, now they can't. Yeah, and now they like, all, they're all just under Reebok. Yeah. And so they've lost – they've already lost that. So you're already slowly like, you have enough to buy an island, bro. Let's talk about that. You have enough to buy an island. It's like, yo, and, and, and what a lot of these executives fail to realize that this, the, the, that's the sort of addiction of money is that even if they were to take a cut from their pay to pay their athletes more, he could still buy an island. That's the fucked up part about all of it is that the bro wants I, has island money, but he's like, this is not enough until I have two island money. And then two island money won't be enough because, man, I want three island money. That's how that shit works. And, uh, that's how money works, That's bro. how money works. That's that why is how money works. I don't know if people are like, oh, but there's this. I'm like, no, bro, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about how money works. Yeah. This is the reason why I'm a, the American worker hasn't gotten hasn't gotten a pay raise in however long. While the companies make billions and billions of dollars, it's the same reason why these fighters are getting fucked over in the deals. Their pay rate, their rate isn't really going up in accordance to how much money is actually being made. Mm -hmm. And if the, if, if the fighters leave, if the big fighters leave, then the UFC is fucked, right? Because all that will happen is that the UFC will be used as a training ground until the fighters become good enough and they'll to be make like, their I own want money. out. Because <laughs> they're like, oh, I'm a superstar. I don't need this fucking I building. Want out. And what the UFC It'll be college. Yeah. What the UFC doesn't realize is that if they pay enough, the, fighter, the fighters want to fight more than they want to promote, right? The only reason they're promoting is because they're getting fucked on the deal. So if you give them a good deal, they're going to stay with you because they don't want to go promote. Not yeah. all of them. Not all of them are McGregor's. A lot, you know what I mean? Mag McGregor is a special John type. Jones isn't a McGregor. McGregor, yeah. That's the point. John yeah. Jones. Like, John Jones. Is a you, star because he's, a, he's the best. Yeah. If there you, are people who are stars because they're the best. Yes. If you gave him the option of, like, you can promote this fight or you cannot, he'd, be, he'd probably more often than not, he'd say, well, if I get a fair deal on not promoting it, I'd rather just not do it. Well, they promote it because it's like – I mean, he's going to promote it, but it's just like this is the thing. Because all fight – you got to remember because it, it's not even that you're promoting it. It's like you do – you're fighting another person. You kind of got you get yourself – Right. There's more to it than that, I think. But Conor McGregor is going to promote it in a way that like no – it's different. Yeah. Well, I, I, It's a personality thing. I don't mean not promote it, but I'm just saying – I guess the right word is that he – now fighters are trying to be the actual promoters too. Where like the, the guy who – like, Oh, you mean yeah, Floyd Mayweather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Want to make all that money. Yeah. But I would say there's a, the UFC. There's a fair amount of stars in the UFC that aren't interested in that. But 
the fact that they're getting fucked on the deal, they're like, well, might as well do it. You know what I mean? You're forcing your stars to become it. Where if you're the UFC, you can win on complacency. You can win on complacency. It's there. It's there. People will. There are those star people that will fight for a little less if they don't have to do all the other shit. And that's and the Man, UFC. Fuck all that shit, bro. Just let these niggas have an independent contract. That's what they should do. But that's what they should do. That's what they should do. Fuck all that shit. The thing you don't get to own them. I get that. But man, fuck all that shit, dog. It's like, let these niggas. You built up the sport. It's like, hey, bro, you got to let it go. Mm-hmm. You built up your baby to be what it is. Let her fly. Yeah. Let her, let her fly now, dog. She's a, uh, she's, you, you hit Conor McGregor, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, he changed your sport, fool. That's how famous that nigga is. Because that nigga's more just as famous as LeBron James. You know, Tom Brady, yeah, like, yeah, he's, he's that, he's, he's, that he's with them. He's mm-hmm. sitting up there with them boys. Mm-hmm. So it's like, bro, you, you got, you can't, and that nigga's retiring now because, like, this shit is bullshit. Like, you, you, like, he's like, bro, I can make, I can make, I fought Floyd. I know how much I can make. Yeah. I fought, I fought a guy who got paid more, and I know if I fight him again, I, my numbers go up. Because I'm Conor McGregor now, baby. Mm-hmm. Like, bro, you got to pay these niggas, dog. You got to pay these niggas, fool. But. Ooh, I saw a dude take a Dana White to task on ESPN. That shit was funny as hell. What did he say? He said how, because uh, Dana White was saying all the good points. Because he, he's got, don't get me wrong, Dana, Dana White has points too. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he was saying it's a business and all that, and he's losing all this money. It's not like he's gaining money. He's just losing money. He's just trying to keep his sport and his business afloat. And the black dude was like, hey, bro, I commend you for that. Nobody's saying, he's like, I'm just an athlete. I don't know anything about your business. I'm just an athlete. You know, whoop de whoop. And he goes, and just so you know, I'm the only company that, like, all these other NBA leagues and whoop de whoop and NFL, they have to pay their, they're going to pay their people less. They're already setting up deals to pay their people less. I've kept the contracts the same. And the dude said, well, it might be a problem that you're already paying them, that you don't have to pay them less. Dana was like, but, you know, and it's just like, hey, bro, I agree with him. It's like, hey, bro, you bragging about it, but maybe it was like, yeah, maybe you don't have to change the pay because you're like, oh, it doesn't even fucking affect it, as Dalia would say, yeah. doesn't make a dent. So yeah, UFC change the shit. Last question, sign before okay. we wrap this up. Okay. Basketball, NBA playoffs. Um. How do you feel? Twenty-two team play in with the elimination game for the eight seed. I I I get what they're doing. I get what they're doing because they 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 don't want to start the playoffs right away, because they want the people they want them to have at least a little bit of a warm up. Um, it's a little bit. I'm not a little bit 100% clear what the actual, like, the full rules are to get in. But it also does seem a little manufactured to get certain people in. They're fucking over my Grizzlies. It does seem manufactured to really try to get Zion in. And it's... And uh, at the worst case, Damian Lillard. Yeah, at the... I mean, but, like, and here's the reality of, of, of the situation of, like, how that could turn around and screw the NBA instead of just starting the playoffs immediately is that in front of the Pelicans, in front of... The Trailblazers and just behind the Grizzlies are the Kings. The Kings are the ninth seed. The Kings were a very hot team when the NBA ended. So if you're try if you're trying to manipulate it, there's a reason why there's like f- like 13 teams in the West and only nine teams in the East playing. But if you're trying to manipulate it, so you get one of your stars in, and let's say you're trying to get Zion over Ja or Lillard over Ja. And the Kings get in. Because those are the two. Yeah, and the Kings get in. Well, then you've lost Jaw for the playoffs over the Kings. And you had a star. You had a star. The Kings had a bona fide. Mm -hmm. Already, it's already, they've beaten the Lakers this season. They went one on one with the Lakers the two games they played. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's already fine. Also, though. It's already fine. Yeah. Also, though, if that. cheat my motherfucking boys, bro. If that happens, congrats to the Kings for beating those guys. <laughs> oh, bro. If, that's what's going to happen, bro. Y'all going to yeah. try to manipulate shit, this shit, and the Kings going to win a motherfucking world title. And yeah. they're just going to be like, well, yep, well take that's, that. That's what you deserve. Take all that and <laughs> deal with that shit, bro. The sorry ass Kings are the fucking champs. And I'm not saying, like, oh, by default. Nope, they're the champs. They won fair and square, bro. Because they did. Whoever wins, wins fair and square. Yeah. I hate when people say, like, oh, this, that. It's like, hey, whoever wins in that playoff series wins. Wins. Period. Wins. Whoever wins, wins. Mm-hmm. It is no what it is. No asterisks, no nothing. No asterisks. Ain't no asterisks, bro. Oh, but it was this, that. No, 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 no. The playoff, unless they do some weird, like, hey, we all have to do, like, a one-game elimination playoff thing, I'd be like, all right, maybe that's an asterisk by that winner. But it's like, oh, no, no, they're doing a straight-up playoff series? Nigga, whoever wins, wins. And I get why they have to do the eight games. You can't just have them go straight into the playoffs. Right. The eight games, you got to have them have some games. But I don't like, it should be, hey, bro, in these eight games, what happens, happens. Yeah. If you go on an eight-game win streak, d- other teams. And you and the Grizzlies lose, is, then you get in there. Is there is there any other sort of weird rule? 
Uh, it's yeah. Who, so the elimination game is so whoever's the eight and ninth seed play an elimination game. A one game elimination game. Two, uh, three game technically. Okay. So the AC just has to win once. Which call seed has to win twice. twice. Okay. So we can go technically to three. Okay. I, and I get the idea of that. The idea because it's like. More games, more this, more entertainment, more money. All more, the more money. And it's like this. If you're the one seed now, the the home field advantage is gone. Right? Yep. You're like that's the big advantage. So it's like I get like you get a tired out eighth seed. Or yep. a tired out ninth seed. A little bit. So you have a little more rest than them. I, and I get that. But when it gets to that finals, that advantage is gone. Yeah. Which sucks. Yeah. Which does suck. But like for teams like the Clippers. It's like, oh, nigga, we never had a home court advantage anyway. Yeah. This is great. Let's yeah. play with no fans. Fucking Lakers. Let's go. Let's Now let's have that West Conference Finals, Lakers. It changes. Where it's not seven straight home games. Yeah. It changes It changes the vibe of the game. Ooh. It changes the vibe of what uh, appear, what might be the Western Conference Finals. I don't even know anymore. How can you even make predictions? I mean, like you can make predictions based on what you think was what was I, happening. And, I mean, and it's Le- just and on it's the LeBron. team. It's Le- it's, and Kawhi, it's the yeah. team. And they've, re- and they've been resting. Mm-hmm. And Anthony Davis. Uh, I, I would say... I don't see how they don't make it. I would say that e- now one of them is going to make I, the East is where I'd be like, nigga, I, I don't know what's going to happen. The East is a little crazy anyway. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The East is already crazy. I, I think the West, man, I don't see anybody. And I'm just being honest with you. And you tell me if you do. I don't see anybody really upsetting either one of those teams. I think, uh, I, I, I think a team like a Denver might come out of nowhere and surprise a team. Do you see one of them is making it? Yeah. I, I don't do, you, think- like, do you see both of them, a world where both of them get upset? No, but I can see one of them getting upset. I could Who do you think it'll be? If you had to Probably guess. the Clippers. The the if I had to guess, it's gonna be it's gonna be Lakers. Lakers still have Kobe. Yeah, I, I think it's gonna be Lakers. I still have something to play for. Lakers Nuggets in the Western Conference Finals. If they mm-hmm. if one gets upset, like everybody else, they have something to play for. Don't get me wrong, but the Lakers have still have like no. This championship means everything. Yeah. And that is a different level of different gear than everybody other every other team's gonna have. Also, they have the best leader. As far as leaders in the NBA, because say what you want about all oh, this. I think Kawhi's the best. I think this player is all right. He may be, but the best leader in the NBA is LeBron motherfucking James. Mm-hmm. It's just like, who's the best leader in football, bro? It's Tom Brady. Now, he's like, Mahomes coming. Is there this and there that? Absolutely, of course. I think John Morant's going to be one of the best leaders in the NBA when he's done. I think that guy has an Isaiah Thomas thing. I think he has a Chauncey Phillips effect. I think he has a Tony Parker kind of. He's a champion. Mm-hmm. John Morant, like, he. Now, will he do it with the Grizzlies? I pray. But that dude's going to win wherever he goes. I'll say that. I'm calling it now. That dude's got. He's got one. He he reminds me of those kind of guys, like tough, gritty point guards who are gonna win you a ring. You know what I'm saying, Mike? Uh, if you give him the right pieces, because Mike Conley was also that. He just didn't have. Because Mike Conley was that kind of nigga too. People forget he just didn't have that last piece. Yeah, yeah. Because in the playoffs, bro, you gotta remember he was averaging like 24, 25 points a game, like eight, nine assists. He was going off. You know, it was just he just didn't have that. You know, Mark was still cold, and Zebo and Tony were cold, but we needed one score. One more score. And and uh, uh, last but not least, it's, it'll be interesting to see what Utah's going to be like through all this. Oh, a dead team. It's going to be interesting to watch them play because they're, they're, they're going to be in the playoffs. They're going to have to practice together. Yep. It'll be interesting to watch them play. That's what I'm excited about. We'll be right back. Sports <laughs> Center. Beaners, this is your intermission right now. Before we get into the episode you are here for, uh, really quick, thank you for listening. Yes, we love you. We do. Uh, please subscribe to us on YouTube. Uh, rate and review this podcast on iTunes. Please rate and review. That stuff matters. We could use the help and we would appreciate it. Yeah, tell your friends about the podcast. We know you love it. Tell your friends about the podcast. We know you love it. You keep going back and listening to old episodes. That's yeah. how we know you love it. We appreciate that. And, uh, yeah, follow us on Instagram, at SpoilTheBeans, and then you can find our individual Instagrams. We're linked on everything. Follow Derek us Derek Poston, Sanamad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, and uh, shout out to Greg Scamato for making our theme music. Uh, if you want uh, some more samples from him or maybe help from him, check out gregcanhelp.com. Yep. Yeah. And now back to your future presentation. Buster Posey's a bitch. What? Mm, no, what's up, dog? No, he's not. No, he's not. Okay. I don't know where that came from. Buster uh, Posey's a little biatch, and we got to add reads. It's on. Let's go. Yeah, guys. Do you want to know what football players do in their spare time Absolutely. while they're being dads? And not playing football because it's play uh, football. not season right now. Oh, well, uh, it's training camp. They're reporting soon, if not, have, haven't already at this point. Uh, yeah, I guess it is coming up. Yeah. Well, Ooh, I don't think I'll be able to do that. I'll find a way to ignore the problem. Uh <laughs> 
<laughs> but aside from that, that, but besides that, if you want to see their day to day life, you should follow Darren Bates on Instagram. Darren Bates on Instagram. He's my best friend. He is sexy and he is gay or something. Or no, he's dead. He's a dad. He's a dad. Yeah, he's which one is, of those. I knew he's one of those things. But I like the guy. Super gay. D a r e n b a t e s. Darren Bates. Weslin underscore underscore Weslin son underscore fifty six. The Jews. Maybe here. That's not his slogan. Wrong slogan. Uh, yeah. <laughs> not his slogan. Yeah. Uh, Darren Bates, uh, go follow him. He's a good guy. And yes. good follow, and he pays for that. Mm-hmm. And you also can, too, if you yes. want to. If you guys are looking for us to shout you out, and a place to hide the Jews, because right now they're nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> We don't have time for this. Asan, <laughs> let's get to fucking Independence Day. You know what I mean? Yes. Or Independence Weekend, excuse me. Yes. To them, it's in like two days. But it's Independence Weekend. It's 2020. The fucking world's on fire. How about yours? That's the way I like it. I'll never get bored. Yeah. Hey, now. You're, You're an all star. There's a game on. Uh, go play. All right. <laughs> uh, uh, before we finish that song, can you do me a favor? Yeah. To help me celebrate Fourth of July weekend? Okay. Yes. Can you tell me? Mm-hmm. Ugh. What you think happens? Mm-hmm. In the 86th greatest movie of all time. According to everything. Uh, no, 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 no. According to uh, the, the international study, they did, like the AFI. Oh, AFI, AFI. American Film Institute. Mm-hmm. Okay. Platoon. Oh. Okay. I know vague things about it, I think. I've heard it's an amazing movie. You've told me it's an amazing movie before. I mean, the American film is yeah. it's pretty good. Yeah. Um, well, who are they, you know? Do they do their own research? Uh, <laughs> do they look at the real stats, huh? Um, no. Uh, okay, so I think it's about the Vietnam War, and it's probably about this platoon as it goes through the Vietnam War, huh? They're the best. Uh, <laughs> uh and, uh, you know... You can't it, see my screen. Can no, you? no, I can't. Uh, it's about maybe one... Like, let's say there's... I think they're sent on a mission. And I think this is... 83rd number. I'm sorry, 83rd, not 86th. 83rd. Okay, so this, this probably won a Best Picture and all that sort of shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it's about... You know yeah. who directed it? Mm, it's not... No, Cop- that's not Coppola. No. No, I don't. All right, we'll get there then. Um, okay. So they go on. Uh, they have to go on a mission. And this platoon has to go on a mission to the, the, the deep Vietnam jungles. You know what I mean? And it's just they get like is this the one where they get lost. I'm gonna say they get lost. I know there's a movie like that. I'm guessing this one. All right. So they get lost, and then they you just saw them so slowly start to like lose their minds. I guess while well, they're like they're trying to fight Viet Cong, but they don't know who. They don't know where they are because you know there's that they're the unseen enemy and they fall into booby traps and then you know at some point so pro- so probably since about Vietnam someone frags their own commander or whatever you know what I mean there's some infighting going on and then uh, well they do what does that mean on explain it to the listeners so when you frag uh, a lot of people uh, from this is what I this is from a long time ago I heard it's something like when the the soldiers either went crazy or like they they sort of mutinied they would throw grenades at their own people mm-hmm. and their own commander like when especially when they were given like. Orders that they didn't like, I think. And mm-hmm. I'm not 100 percent sure. I don't know a lot about the Vietnam War, honestly. Um, yeah, and then maybe because you hate the gooks. Uh, your words. Your words. You said that. N- no, I just don't. You know what it is? It's like it's like watching highlights of your own team when they lost. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, like I don't need to watch the Super Bowl highlights. You know, I don't. <laughs> I, I get the general vibe of what happened. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. So this war is just 2016 to you, with the Warriors. Yes, yes. Where it's like, ah, I don't need to. I don't need to watch these highlights. I know who wins. Yeah, I know who wins. I'll watch. I'll watch the Revolutionary War highlights. <laughs> 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 there were 15 Warriors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll watch that. I'll watch those. You know, I don't. I don't need to watch this weird rebuilding stage that we're in. <laughs> but uh, the yeah, and then so the it, it ends with one of the guys sort of making it out alive and finding like. Getting to the place where they need to go. Okay, but it's like uh, the study of like a soldiers and being ice fight, I, like just a breaking after being in this terrible situation for so long. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
Not this movie at all. Okay. I'm kind of curious what movie you're describing because okay. a little bit of it was Apocalypse Now. Okay. Which is another movie about this, but then, okay. then you kind of got into this, something else where I was like, well, that, that's not Apocalypse Now. So I was kind of like, did you? I've I, never I, seen Apocalypse you know, Now. So I'm just I know you guess. haven't. I, oh, I knew you haven't. Yeah. Uh, this is just a pure guess. Pure guess. But I know that's, that's the movie you heard. It's not, you, none of that. Every, you were just as wrong on Hardball as you were on this one. Does okay. that make sense? Okay. Like you, you completely, I, you could tell, I was like, oh, he thinks this is Apocalypse Now. And then the other half of that was like, I don't know what movie you're talking about. Okay. So I was actually kind of curious, like, what movie is that? that no, you I just sort of made it up as I went. I, oh, okay. I feel like I heard someone <laughs> describing a movie like this at some point. Oh, you heard of Apocalypse Now? Yeah. That's what you heard of, as far as the mental thing and all that. Okay. Yeah. This is not has nothing to do with that. Okay. Is this Vietnam? This is Vietnam. Okay. That's okay. the that you were right about that, but okay. you that's what you, the movie you you were talking about another movie. This okay. has nothing to do with what you said. Oliver Stone directed this. Okay. Oh wow. And what makes this a special movie, Asan? This is the first movie ever that he's gay. I don't even know if he's gay, actually. <laughs> he could be, now that I say it out loud. He's not gay, but he is a woman now. <laughs> um, no, it's real shit. This is the first movie ever where the director lived through what he directed. Meaning? This is his story in the Vietnam War. Oh, fuck. That's what makes this really fucking crazy. Okay, and that's what probably makes him able to tell it really well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Six million dollar budget in eighty six, it made hundred and thirty eight million. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, Oliver Stone came out swinging. Dude, he knocked that he didn't even knock that out of the ballpark. He knocked that into a different state. Yeah, that's why they let him like they were like, Oh, make some more. Yeah. Make yeah, more. Yeah. Make, and then he ended up making a bunch more amazing films. God, I mean, yeah, he's a famous guy. Did you know uh there is this is a trilogy. I didn't know this. Mm. I didn't know this is a trilogy of the movies. They all kind of go together. This and then another movie I even haven't seen, Born on Fourth of July, with Tom Cruise. Oh, okay. You've heard of this, yeah? No. That's the one he he got Oscar nominated for, Tom mm-hmm. Cruise. Uh, and it's a big Vietnam movie. And then Heaven and Earth, which I've never heard of or seen. But wow. I didn't know this was a Where part does it of... fall in the trilogy? When That's does the last fall one. in the Vietnam War cinematic universe? 93. 93. Fourth of July was 89. Okay. This was 86. So this is the first one. So this is the first one of, mm-hmm. the, of these movies that kind of go together. Which I didn't, I didn't know that, though. I had no Are idea. Are they all Oliver Stone movies? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, he made them all. He made them all, wrote them all, directed them all. This okay. is all him. This is all. But this one is, that's why this is the, this is the first time a, 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 a guy directed a movie about a war that he was in. Yeah. So that's why this was a gigantic deal. And his, uh, you've seen Tropic Thunder, yes? Yes. You know they're making fun of this. Oh. You know how they're like, oh, this director's crazy and we're going to go into the jungle and shoot it exactly like it? That's why this movie is one of the greatest movies of all time. Asan, this doesn't look like Saving Private Ryan. This doesn't look like Dunkirk, 1917. You're not like, oh, this is beautiful. You're like, oh, my God, is this re- Are they killing each other? It looks like it was shot on a cell phone. Ooh, that's scary. He took it there. But yeah. that's what that movie's making fun of. Right. So you know. Okay. Wow. Just so, just so you can get a little reference. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I see it now. And the characters in that movie, they're also making fun of. So I should expect to laugh a lot during this. That's what you're telling me. No, but some person, somebody is in blackface in this. So, <laughs> let's get started, shall we? Also, uh, shout out to all our fallen heroes, man. I get that this sucks. Watching this movie, you're like, oh, man, my bad. You know, uh, you guys should, you know, get talked about a lot more. Yeah, and <laughs> probably shouldn't be homeless in disproportionate rates. But you Especially know. you guys from this one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Especially you guys from this one, because it's like, oh, yeah, 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 I get why y'all were a little fucked up when y'all came home. Okay, you ready? Yep. Shout out to all you guys. That's an insane thing that y'all do. Can't believe y'all do it. Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth. Ecclesiastes. Okay. We see trucks and planes on a military base. Credits are rolling, right? Platoon. Very somber music playing. We see soldiers getting off of a plane onto a base, like in Vietnam, onto the, like their base. Okay. All right? We see our lead in this movie. Do you know who's in the, any of this, by is the this way? Is this Martin Sheen? Is this the one? Is this one of the Sheens? See? You think this is Apocalypse Now? Uh, yeah. This is Charlie. This is Charlie. Oh, shit. You didn't know that, huh? That no. one was in one and the one is in the other? No. So one is in one of the biggest war movies of all time. And the other is in the other biggest war movie of all time. Crazy, okay. huh? That's pretty wild. <laughs> That's it's also crazy wild. that you know a lot about Apocalypse Now, but yeah. nothing about this one. <laughs> no. <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, this is Charlie's. Okay. 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 Uh, sand blowing in his eyes. His name's Chris. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, they, they, right when they get off, they see bodies being carted off and like right onto the plane that they just got off of. Oh, oh, nice, nice. What a what a positive thing to see. <laughs> right when you what land. A, huh? 
I think that you call that a good omen, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what you call that. One soldier, the guy behind him, is like immediately starts panicking. Mm-hmm. Just like, oh shit, oh shit, what? Is that what I think it is, man? What is that, man? You know, like just full panic, right? And then another, you hear a guy go, soldiers, follow me. They keep walking. As that guy is just like, man, what the fuck? What? You know, uh, you see the veterans, like people who have been there for a while, walking by them, just going. You've seen Shawshank Redemption, right? Yes. New me, new me, new me, new me. And like laughing at them all. And so they're all just just like that. That same from Shawshank out. when they're walking in. Yeah. Just like, man, what the fuck is happening? Uh, September 1967. Bravo Company. This is the 25th in- Infantry somewhere near the Cambodian border. Okay. Credits are still rolling. We still, and now we start seeing the soldiers going through the jungle quietly. All right, full formation. You know what I mean? They're going through. Mm-hmm. Uh, Charlie Sheen is in this group. Okay. All right, so like time has passed a little okay. bit. You know what I mean? We see our other lead in this, a young Willem Dafoe. Wow. Oscar Nam in this one, baby. He steals the movie. He's my favorite person in this movie by far. Okay. He is unreal in this. Okay, I'm excited. This is our second Willem Dafoe movie recently. Mm-hmm. And we, we watched, watched Murder- a Willem Dafoe movie yesterday, last night as well. Yeah, we watched Murder on the Orient Express. Mm-hmm. That was last night? Uh, two nights ago. Two nights ago. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but this, no, but this is, he's brawn off. Yeah. If, that, if this were that. You know okay. what I mean? He's the okay. He's the the lead in this. And clearly this is a much better movie. Than yeah. Because <laughs> there's two leads in this. And then because we see him, mm-hmm. Willem Dafoe, and then we see our other lead in this. Tom Berenger. Okay, he's a great actor yes, as well. Yes, the name is very familiar, and yeah. I feel like I've seen He him also got the Oscar nom for this. I, they both, him and, him and they both got uh, supporting actor noms. Yeah. Uh, it's crazy neither one of them didn't win. I'm curious who won, but I would have given it to Berenger, even over Defoe, even though I'd like Defoe. He's my favorite person in this movie. Okay. Berenger's the best actor in this movie. Okay. okay. Does that make sense? I'm excited. This no, is, no, oh, I'm oh, oh this movie had like 11 Oscar noms. This is one of those, and okay. won like eight. Or You know what I'm saying? One, okay. It was one of those. Uh, I'm curious. We should look up who won Best Picture after this. Well, they won oh, Best Picture. Best Picture. Oh, right. Best Actor. Uh, yeah, supporting Best Supporting. Actor. Best Supporting, yeah. Because uh, this is one of those movies that Charlie Sheen, my point was, Charlie Sheen is the, it's like how Eric Foreman is the lead, but like the yeah. big characters are really like Everyone around Kelso him. and motherfucking Donna. He's like the you know? straight man in this. Yes, Charlie Sheen is what keeps the story going, but William Defoe and Berenger are our leads. Okay. Okay? Okay. Uh, they're all walking through the jungle. At one point, Sheen like falls because he's just tired. Berenger literally with one hand picks him up mm-hmm. and fuck it. Like, get on, get a move on, boy. You know, just keeps him pushing, right? Jungle's. It looks hot and muggy because you can tell they shot it in a real jungle. Like, okay. oh, they went to the Vietnam jungle to shoot this. It's completely just fucking disgusting, looking, you know. And they're sweating their ass off. Sheen's exhausted. They're passing by burnt up dead bodies, right? And he, he, like, he's freaking out. And Barringer's like, hey, because he starts throwing up, you know. And the whole team gets mad at him. He's like, you simple son of a bitch, get up, right? He's clearly because everybody like listens to him. He's clearly the leader, leader of this. Okay. Okay. Face scarred all the way up. This is the first time you see him at this point, and it's like, whoa. This guy looks like a fuck. He's been here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It looks scary, too, huh? Oh, yeah. So the boys, they all sit and they take a break. Uh, Sheen has bugs all over him. Like, it's so weird. Like, they, they put bugs all over him. He had like, ants and all that shit. And he's just, like, freaking out. And he's freaking out. And then finally, Defoe comes over to help. He doesn't say anything. But he comes over, and he, like, puts a cloth on him and gets the bugs off him. And, like, you know, puts the cloth on him like this. Mm-hmm. And then he opens it up, and he goes... You hump too much stuff, troop. Charlie Sheen looks at him. He goes, next time before you carry all this, check with me first. And he kind of laughs to himself. And he lifts him up, right? And he walks off. Sheen kind of looks at him and then passes out. Okay? So they set up camp. They finally find a place to set up camp. And a helicopter, like, drops off a bunch of supplies for him. Okay? Helicopter goes off. They set Like, they set it up nice. You see a, a young black actor who was, remember the bad guy in Barbershop? Oh, yeah. Him. Okay. He's in this. Everyone's in this, by the way. There's not a single person in this that didn't go on to have a unreal career. What's his name? I forgot his name. He's a great, he has a name. I forgot his name in real life. Fuck, I can look it up right here, though. It is. Yeah, I'm curious. It is. I gotta check, I gotta check, I gotta check. It is. We're talking about the, the loan Keith shark Keith David. Keith David. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's his name. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a great, a great actor. Yeah. Uh, we're, but just so you know, we're getting started. Okay. We're just getting started. All right. He, his name's King. Okay. He's writing letters to his girl. We see a young, another young black actor cooking for the for the crew. Forrest Whitaker. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, when I say everyone is, I mean everyone's like an Oscar winner. Okay. Like that. Okay. <laughs> like everyone's like one of the best actors alive. Also, uh, like- Oliver Stone wasn't playing. Also, on this budget, they all read the script and were like, oh, I have to be in this movie. They all knew. 
This I bet the script, but the script is so. I mean, this movie is well, so also, good. Also, uh, what like eighty nine too? It's like eighty six. It's not like he's the. F- he's, it's, it's not. Oh, like none of these guys are famous, other yeah, than yeah. Defoe and Beringer. Is Defoe famous? In Defoe, film? I mean, Defoe's big enough to get a lead, uh, like this leading role okay. for sure. Okay. Beringer's, Beringer's for sure. Beringer's famous. famous. Uh, Charlie Sheen's a name, but yeah. he's got. But he's been in some stuff by at this point, eighty six. Uh, yeah, because he's been in some stuff. So yeah, everyone in. But you're right. Everyone down that I'm saying, they just got him. Yeah. But they got. They gave like these guys lines in this movie. Like Keith David has lines. So Forrest Whitaker has lines. Whoever, whoever was casting this really knocked it out of the park. Wow. Really saw. Well, talent. he produced it, directed it, and screenwrote it. So I'm assuming he has something to do with the casting. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I, I think it'd be weird if that point he was like, Nah, I'm out of that part. Uh, you know my story? I'm going to let someone else control yeah. it. This is clearly, this was, I mean, the whole point of this, because that's why it makes this, uh, he was so crazy on the set, because this was his baby 100%. Mm. He had final cut, he had final say, he had everything. He, he was one of those, like, he's also like a, he's a known crazy director. Right. Like, he's a known psychopath director. So. Some, there's some weird thing about directors that make Some it, of them. Some not, of them. No, he's one of the, he's a extreme, it's, he's a far extreme. You know what it is? It's like, it's like, for whatever, like, you know how, like, wide receivers, like, some of them can fall into that diva role, like, yeah. really easily, and whatever, for, and it's that position, you yeah. know? That's the same type of thing with directors. Well, this some is different. of them really devolve into, like. True, some of them devolve. Yeah. This isn't a diva, this guy was a Vietnam vet. This isn't a diva, this is just a hard ass. No, no, no I'm not saying that the directors are divas, I'm just saying, like, No, no, I agree with you, some yeah. directors are divas. I'm saying this one is different, like, I think some directors get fame and then they grow up, you become what you become, just like an actor, just like anybody, I mean, athletes, all that kind of shit. I was just saying, like, oh, this guy's definitely different because he, this, he came in like this. And he was a Vietnam vet, he, well, he, this isn't a regular guy. No. Most, how many directors have been to fucking war, period, let alone a war of this caliber that was this real? Oh, wow. Yeah. You don't really think of directors being veterans. Or actors either. No. No. So yeah. that's why I was like, this is definitely a... I get why all these actors want to be on this movie, A, because it's like, you read this, this... I mean, when we get into what this movie's about, it's like, oh, that's so fucking good. But I get why they want to do it. But also, it's just like, man, I bet working with this guy was probably like, oh, man, this guy is like real. Mm. Like, this isn't just like some artsy director. This is just a real dude. Yeah. He's just trying to get his story across. So... uh. We see like a guy yells at a young Sheen to like dig and get to work on the camp. So as Sheen's digging, a voiceover comes in. It's his. And he goes, uh, man, this place is a hell. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm so tired. Up at 5 a.m., you hump all day. Then you go dig a foxhole and you eat. Repeat over and over and over again every day. No one tells you anything if you're new. A new guy's life is worth nothing out here. Uh, if you get killed in Nam. They all say it's better to happen in the first week. After that, it's bad. Jesus. Because if you get killed in the beginning, at least you got it over with. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy, huh? <sighs> but to think that, like... What a re- reality. What a reality. And to think that you didn't have a choice a lot of times. You were just you were on TV, and they called your number, and you had to go. Mm-hmm. Oh. So maybe, he goes in the voiceover, maybe you sleep three, four hours a night if you're lucky. I don't think I can keep this up for a year, Grandma. I love you. Talk to you soon. All right, so the voiceover, just you know, is always him writing a letter. It's him writing a letter. Okay. okay. Uh, right then, Berenger comes up to a young, his number two, another sergeant in this platoon. Okay. A young Dr. Cox from Scrubs. Wow. He's First, Sergeant O'Neill. That's crazy. Now, he's very important in this. Right? Okay. He's even more, like, he has more lines than the other two guys I was just saying. Forcing them, but he, 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 I would say he's like maybe a fourth or fifth lead in this. Damn, what a career he's had. Oh, dude, Dr. Cox. Oh, Dr. Cox's character in this is insane, too. Yeah. Okay. He's nothing like him. Like, he's like him in that he talks fast. Like, you can tell, like, that, that, like that's always a character trait of his. Like, he, yeah. He's always known how to talk fast and, like, you can hear him. But, like, the, the personality of who he is. I like that. Yeah, it's like, oh, he's got right. Dr. Cox can act. Dr. Cox can act. But, man, he's, a, he's in fucking platoon. <laughs> also, all these dudes get to be like, man, yeah, I was in platoon. Yeah. It's like, Damn, bro. Yeah. <laughs> so they're they're talking right. Him and Banger. Uh, O'Neill clearly sucks up to him. He's clearly like his number. Like you know what I mean. Like he's like I am your number two. Does that make sense? Right. Like, uh, so you got Sergeant Barnes. That's Banger. Mm-hmm. Sergeant O'Neill. That's Cox. That's Cox. And Sergeant Elias. That's Defoe. Oh, okay. All right. Those are your three sergeants. Okay. Okay. There's another guy also standing in this group while these guys are talking. All right, but we don't know who that is yet. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, they're arguing, like they're going back and forth. Who do if they're arguing, uh, like over Barnes' orders? They like his Barnes has an order, and they like they don't like it. Uh, but Doctor Cox has his back, 
you know, of course, he's, you know, Sergeant O'Neill. And then him and Defoe argue some more. They clearly don't like, you know, they're clearly at odds a little bit here. And, uh... But, like, O'Neal's like, oh, just shut up, uh, Elias. You know, fucking just do what, you know, Barnes tells you to do so we can get the job. Like, you know, kind of, like, yeah. brushes off his opinion. Just, like, listen to him, right? And then he's like, man, O'Neal, do you have to be a fucking prick every day? Like, the fellow's looking at him. And O'Neal's like, oh, right? And then Elias just goes, like, agrees with Barnes and walks off. Like, fuck, I'll do it. But whatever. Right. You know? Because uh, he wanted his, he wants it. So, you know, how they all have their camps. Right. All right? But they're all working together. But they all are different sergeants. Right. Okay. So he wanted Elias's camp to go, like, take the lead on this ambush thing. And then that, Elias was like, man, why do you always make it my camp and not O'Neill's? And that, you see what I'm saying? So there's, right. you see the, the, the problem the dynamic. here. The, 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 the politics also. Right. Always politics. Never. Never not politics. Never. Spe- well, Every, war. I mean, yeah. Jesus, that is politics. Yeah. <laughs> That's fair. That's but the, yeah, even in your own platoon. Yeah. It's like, of course. Always politics. So they walk off, right? They all kind of walk off each other. Now, like, remember I said there was another guy standing in that circle? Yeah. Okay, this is important. That other guy, as they all walk off, comes up to Barnes and goes, uh, Sergeant Barnes? And he goes, yes, Lieutenant. So this is Lieutenant Wolf. Okay. He's the he- head of th- all of them. All of them, okay. okay. You, now, do you listen? He was not talking in that circle. Right. No one was even paying attention to him. Right. All right, do you see what I'm saying? Okay. He goes, hey, uh, uh, excuse me, Barnes, but do you, do you mind in front of the men if, you, you know, if I, I think I should be the one giving the orders, don't you think? And Barnes looks at him and goes, <laughs> yes, sir. Walks off. So now, are you getting with a, just okay. getting a little bit of the, the okay. of what's already kind of happening? And here. who plays the lieutenant? Uh, an actor you recognize. You were gonna recognize. He's not as famous as other guys, but he's uh-huh. he's had a great career too. Okay. I don't know his name, but he's okay. had a great career as well. Okay, so this is the this is the political dynamic that's going in on this. So you got three guys who are clearly the who are now these are the hardened guys. These are who the troops listen to clearly. Right. And then you got another guy who's in charge of it all, who doesn't look anywhere near as right. His suit's all clean. Does that make sense? The other guys aren't even wearing their fucking gear. Okay. They're wearing just ragtag shit. Okay, so he ain't even close to what they're going through. Ooh, man. Really puts a, really puts war into perspective, that one scene, huh? Just like that, because it was important. Yeah. That's very important that for the yeah. rest of the whole movie that you that you know, okay, the dynamic of what's happening here. Right. So, uh, the soldiers are, they, they like, you know, Elias tells his group what's whoop, you know what what's what the plan is, and they kind of all argue over this bullshit. I don't want to ambush duty because that's I mean it's very dangerous, obviously. You right. know what I'm saying? And you know they're they arguing how it's all politics and whoop de whoop, right? Uh, he, Defoe right then he walks up to Charlie Sheen, Chris, and he immediately tells him what he said earlier. Don't need this. Don't need this. Take this, like, because he has all this shit. Thinking, and he's like, what, you know, because he's been there. He's like, yeah. bro, don't need any of this shit, and it's throwing it off. Don't need, and he's like, what, what, right? And then uh, as Defoe's crew is complaining about O'Neal being a bitch, always sucking Barnes' ass. Right? This is Elias' crew. Right. Because they are the ones that got the ambush. And they're like, man, it's always fucking O'Neal. Like, this should be his crew sometimes. It's bullshit. Okay? You're loving this, aren't you? No, I can see your fan. Hassan loves this. It's like a mystery, but with war. Yeah, yeah. This is amazing. <laughs> oh, dude. It's politics. I love politics. So Two-hour like- movie, too. Literally on the dot. Two hours. So oh, really? it's not too long. Oh, wow. It's, wow. Perfect. Per- wow. I mean, I get I like, assumed this was going to be. It's a war movie, so I assume. It might go long for us to tell it because it's exciting. We're going to yeah. get into the politics and we're going to describe it all, but okay. it's too, It's perfect. It's a perfect movie. It's a per- He made a perfect movie. I like the way this is going. So Defoe, you know, because Chris is looking all nervous. He's still new. He tells him, stay calm. You get, you get stuck, you sit tight. You know, we'll come and get you, all right? Everybody else, lock and load. They head out. They're, the, everybody else is behind them, but they're leading the way. Okay. That's why that's the more dangerous position. Mm-hmm. That's why the other like guys didn't. That's why they're complaining. Right. All right. So, cut back to Chris's voiceover. Uh, my mom and dad didn't want to hear me. Didn't want to hear any of this. Uh, any, hear, hear hear me about any of this war stuff. They but they drove me crazy with the basic normal life of every day. I was always sheltered. Always a special kid. But I want to do my job for my country, like my dad did, like my grandfather did. You're learning about the Chris kid. He's he's a he's from well he's a well off kid. Yeah. Okay. But his family fought in wars. Mm-hmm. But his parents said they don't want it. They didn't want him to be here. Yeah. Okay. He goes, but look, here I am anyway, and I'm just anonymous. You know, most of these guys look at him. Guys that come from the end of the line. Cities you never heard of, and they saw all the guys, and he names them, and they're like Hot Coffee, Mississippi, you know, Plugstown, you know, Iowa, you know what I mean, like naming all these places, you know, uh, you know, most of them two years of high, did two years of high school, and if they're lucky, they'll get a job when they get home. The ones who are lucky. I was gonna say, oof, that is, 
This is not a good outlook for all no. of these people. This is the real bottom of the barrel, and they're the ones fighting for our freedom. That's why I think that's why they're called grunts, maybe, Grandma. But they're the real heart and soul of this country. Beautiful. Beautiful writing, bro. Beautiful. Beautiful. You had to be there to write some shit like that. Yeah, 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 to see that. Mm-hmm. and how, But also you had and to no, have that feel perspective. It. To have that perspective. Preach, yeah. preach it to something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, to have that with that perspective, you got to be sort of like a rich kid or like a well-off kid to be like, oh, shit, like this is what the system truly is. Mm-hmm. Preach. So right then a soldier comes and wakes him up. Mm-hmm. Hey, get up, Chris. It's your, it's your, uh, your own watch guard. Did you fucking fall asleep either. And then he shows him how to use a claymore and set it up. This is what you use. You need to throw it. All that shit. Cut back to the voiceover. Maybe here I'll finally learn something. I don't even know. But I miss you. Tell mom I miss her too. Chris. There's always to her grandma. His right. grandma, okay? So he wakes up. Like cut to, you know, he's on watch. Cut to, he wakes up a black kid. This young black kid, all right? Junior, junior, get up. It's your shift, man. The guy's like, what? He's like, it's your, get up, man. It's your shift, all right? I got to get some sleep while I can still. It's your shift. You're on watch. Hands him the claymore, all right? He, like, he, and he's the, the junior guy's like, all right, all right. Chris goes to sleep, and the junior guy's like, passes out. Okay? Cut to a little time goes by. Chris wakes up in a panic. He has bugs all over his face. He's like, ah, ah, you know? He looks around, and his whole crew's passed out. He even sees Junior's passed out. He's like, huh. And then he looks at his watch. He looks at the time. And he still has a bunch. Of, he has like so many bugs on his face, though. That he's like, ah, like, he, like, you know what I mean? Like that's distracting him. So he's like, ah. and he remembers what, what Defoe did earlier. And you remember he put the cloth on his face. So he does that. He puts the cloth on his face. And, like, oh. and then he like kind of like wipes all the bug like that, like gets him off. And then he opens it and he kind of looks like far out into the distance. And he's like, and then he closes it again, breathes, and then he hears something. And he opens it and he's like. In the distance, something that would look like a branch, he can tell is like really a dude with a gun. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, his eyes get big, and you don't hear no sound. All you hear is his heart. He's like, and then you see the Vietnam guy like go like this, like, like to his, and then you see a bunch of them come out like, you know what I'm saying? Like now they're moving forward. Okay. Okay. You know, and it's like, and now he's sitting there, he looks at the rest of his team, they're all knocked out. And he, he, they, but they're getting really close, and he's like, "You just hear that heart." And he's like, <laughs> "You know," he starts breathing, and then right then, as they get super close, somebody else wakes up and spots him. And the shooting starts, and like, and they start shooting back and forth. One of their guys gets hit, and they start yelling at him, "Throw the claymore, great yo, grass, throw the claymore, throw the claymore!" And he's like. He's like panicking still, right? And then somebody else comes and grabs it. Fucking bar- like Barnes or Defoe come and they fucking get it. You know, they throw, <laughs> you know what I mean? Fucking he's hit. He's hit. And then right then, Chris, ah, I'm hit. I'm hit. I'm hit. Oh, I'm hit. And then another guy is screaming his lungs out. The guy who really got hit. Yeah. Ah, 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 right? And then uh, they grab Chris. Defoe grabs Chris and goes, relax. I mean, uh, Forrest Whitaker, relax. Relax. It's just a scratch. Relax. And Chris is like, no, I'm hit. I'm hit. I'm hit. You right there, you know? As Junior, he's yelling, it's Chris's fault. It's Chris's fault. He fell asleep, and he didn't fucking blow his claymore. It's his fault. Like, he starts putting it on him immediately, the Junior right. guy. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And then uh, right then, Barnes, you know, the guy really who shot up a bunch, grabs the guy. That guy, because he's screaming at the top of his lungs. Ah! Ah, he goes, take the pain. And the guy looks at him. Mm, shut up. Take the pain. And the guy's like, and he takes his hand off his mouth. And it's, now it's quiet. <laughs> Baron's here, bro. I told you, bro. He, he, that nigga's like, woo. So they walk up, because the rest of the Vietnam guys ran away after yeah. they blew the Claymore. Yeah. They walk up on the one that's still alive. You know, like, he's, oh, there's one that breathes. They fucking poof, shoot him, right? Forrest Whitaker's telling Chris, you know, hey, you're going to be fine. It's just a scratch. Don't worry. Don't worry. It's bad, but you're okay, right? Right. And Chris is like, no, I'm over. It's dead. I'm dead. It's all, you know, I'm all over. And then Forrest was like, dude, shut up. You're fine. You're literally about to go get three meals a day and probably a blowjob from a nurse. Like, because it, it is a wound. Like, you are. Right. So shut up. Right. You're fine. Relax. You know? As Junior is yelling, it's his fault, it's his fault, it's his fault. And then Defoe's like, shut up, Junior. Shut up. He gets quiet. And then the guy who, you know, the guy who was shot, he's now like. <gasps> and they're like, Gardner, hang on. Gardner, God damn it, don't you. <gasps> they're like, the bird is, cl- the, the chopper's closed. Come on. Gardner, don't you give up. And then you just see the life. 
Like, you know what I mean? And then the camera pans up to another young guy in this crew. No way. A young Johnny from Entourage. Jesus the brother. Christ. <laughs> what the fuck He's is a happening? kid in this. He's yeah. a kid. Like, he looks like a fucking teenager. He's like teenager. 18. He looks oh. like the young kids that were actually there. He oh, looks like exactly a, like that. A kid kid, right? Mm-hmm. And then they show him, and I mean, all of the, and they show the whole crew, and the whole crew is just like, I mean, because, you know, they lost one. Right. Right then, Behringer looks at him. He gets up, and he looks at the rest of the crew, and he goes, look at this lump of shit. Look at him. The pointing at the dead guy, because he's fat. And he goes, remember what he looks like. You fuck up in a firefight, and I'll guarantee a body bag. Hey, he ain't wrong, though. Uh, he ain't wrong, but, uh, though. Yeah, but Jesus. And he goes, out here, shit is wired at all times. I, I like that line. Out here, shit is, at all times, shit is wired. This is 24-7. This ain't 24, yeah. this ain't 23-6. Yeah, no, there's no sleeping. There's no nothing. You're on edge. You're on edge the whole time. Tw- the whole time. Uh, and he goes, uh, you know, and he, goes, and he points at Chris, and he goes, and that goes for you, shit for brains. <coughs> you don't sleep on a fucking ambush. The next time a bitch that I catch sleeping on his guard, I will make you suffer. Yeah. I shit you not. And then he looks at the doctor and he goes, Doc! And he takes his chains, like his fucking things, mm-hmm. like, tag him and bag him. And he throws the dog tags at him. You know what I mean? That, that is like, oh, that's what that line really means. Right. Tag him and bag him. Like, you hear it, but like, when you see it like that, it's like, oh, that's what you mean. Like, bro, this ain't no game. Also, he's mad at his crew. He's like, bro, this didn't have, you know what I mean? Like, what the fuck? Right then, as Sarge starts walking off, Chris looks at him, and he tells the truth. He's like, Sarge, I didn't fall asleep. What'd you say? I didn't fall asleep, Sarge. And right then, everyone else goes, shut up, Rook. Shut up. Shut the fuck up. And then Drew's like, you fucking liar. You know what I mean? But everyone else is like, he's the new guy. Right. That's where so, Ju- Ju- it was actually Junior knew what he was doing. Right, yeah. They put it on the new guy. The Immediately. New, yeah. The, the new guy has to. What's he, nobody's going to believe him. Yeah, shit flows Nobody's going to believe it. I fell asleep. Yeah. Shit flows downhill. Cause if you, and also, if you're Chris, you, you, know, you, you say one thing, but when everybody tells you shut up, that's it. That's it. You just let it go. You eat it. You eat it. You just have to eat it. So right then, Elias, you know, he tells everybody, knock it off. We got other shit to fucking get done, right? And then he comes up to Barnes, and he says some slick shit to Barnes mm-hmm. about how it didn't have to be a guy, like, from his, you know what I mean? Right. And Barnes kind of looks at him, like, you know? Cause, and Elias doesn't, Elias, like, looks at him back, like, what, bitch? You know what I mean? Like, what, motherfucker? I, I ain't the rest of these niggas. And then he kind of walks off. So they get back to the base camp. Time goes by. Chris is now back from his wound. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. So that, that much time has gone by. Right. Okay. So he is now back from his wound. Everyone's like, oh, look who's back. Woo, woo. Right. O'Neal comes up to him. He's like, oh, look who's back. The fucking, you know, the fucking newbie, right? He goes, well, you. And then he points at King, who's the black guy just standing right next to him. You too. You're on shit duty. And they immediately have to go clean out all like the porta potties. Rough. Like right when he, I'm talking about, he just got off the plane like in the beginning of the movie. Right. And immediately he's on shit duty, right? And King's like, fuck. Because he it's also he did it to him because he's black, because he says like some kind of racist shit to him. You know what I mean? Right. Also, they kind of make they are racist to all the black guys too. I like how Stone kept that. Like, yeah, even even here, don't let it, don't get it twisted. There's still people are still racist. Right. You know what I, I'm saying? Yeah. So uh Right then, you know, as they're cleaning out the poor parties, you know, King is talking about how it's all politics, whoop whoop, and how O'Neal's just full of shit. He has his nose so far, Barnes ass, you know, he can't even fucking like smell it, you know, see his own fucking face. You know what I mean? Like this right. is bullshit. And then uh, there's one guy who's cleaning out the shit with him, and he says, "Man, I, I don't give a damn. I only got 90 days left of this shit. 90 days, bro. You know, and then I'm back home in California. Going, I can't wait to fucking surf, be on that beach. You know what I mean? And then Charlie Sheen goes, "Damn, 90. I got 332 days left." And the other guy goes, damn, I can't even remember back that far. Good Lord. And then he tells him, he was like, in the beginning, don't count this way. He said, don't, he told him, he said, don't count that way. It's depressing. Count up. He said, he said, he said, he said, up until it was started, up until it's halfway, then count down. He said, that way you don't get depressed. Damn. I thought that was a genius way to like, wow, yeah. that is probably how the niggas had to look at it. He's like, hey, bro, if you look at it the whole way, it's too much. But right. if you look at it like, oh, I made it 50 days, or I made it 70 days, or I made it 90 days, or I made it 180 days, and now you can look at it, only 180 days left. left, 172 days left. Oh. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, because if you don't, you will depress. Like, God, it'll be forever. I can't even remember that time. That's crazy. That's so That means that much shit happens. How many people have died and come back and died yeah. and new soldiers and came and died and new, new sergeants, new lieutenants? Faces you see and you're like, I don't need to remember his You've name. killed people? Yeah. Oh, you've killed people. You've seen like horrific deaths too. Like shit that people ain't supposed to see. Yeah. Human beings ain't supposed to see shit like that. 
So right then, Chris, uh, he's talking to the guys, right? And he tells them that he vol- he actually like volunteered for this. He's like, you guys believe that I actually volunteered for this? Mm-hmm. And they go, what? And he's like, yep, I dropped out of college. And they're like, you volunteered for this shit? Like they're like laughing, like are you you a f-? and then the king dude like you are one crazy fucker man. Yeah. Oh my god, giving up a fucking college education? Are you crazy? You know. And then Sheen goes, I just didn't think it was fair. Why do poor kids? Oh, you guys, poor kids have to go to war, and all those rich kids just get to sit back and fucking live the good life, right? And then the king goes, Oh, so you're a crusader? And he starts laughing. He goes, and he goes, What do you? He goes, What you disagree? And the king goes, Man, you gotta be rich to even think some shit like that. And Chris's face is like, that's a smile, like, damn, okay. Uh, <laughs> like, bro, ju- just so you know, that's a, it here that you don't sound cool. You sound privileged as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he goes, let me tell you something, brother. The poor always have been fucked over. Always, wi- always have been and always will be by the rich. That ain't never going to change. Get used to it. I mean, he's right. He's not. Also, that'll never change. Yeah. Period. Yeah. We, we, I, I mean, hopefully, we can yeah, get rid of racism, kind of stuff. Hopefully, like we can systematically, as time goes, get rid of certain things, right? But rich and poor, no. Nah, that is what it is. That is. You just what gotta it is. accept where you lie on that spectrum. Yep. So, or change your situation, but you have to change like, either way. Yeah. But like, will will like the whole situation change? Never. No. So, the black dude kind of likes him, King. He likes. He's like, man, I like you, man. Though he goes. Yeah. You keep being cool like this, I'm going to introduce you to some, to some real cool stuff later. And the other guy kind of starts laughing. Okay. And he's like, you know, like, what? So that night, he takes him to a, a bunk, like his, like another bunker, right? Where these, like, a, the soldiers are chilling, and they're all smoking weed, smoking opium, doing heroin, getting fucking high. Yeah. yeah. Okay? Yeah. And it's all the black guys in there, and then a certain, like, a, a, some of the white guys are in there. Right. Okay? And they ask, uh, they're asking him like, "Yo, why the fuck did you bring the new dude in here with you?" And he's like, "Man, chill out, guys. He's cool." In the back of this group of all the weed smokers and drug users is Sergeant Elias. Ooh. He's one of them. Okay. Do you see? There's a there's, split there's in this. Because yeah. right when Sam saw this, she was like, "Oh, this is interesting." Yeah, it's like ooh, ooh, who is this? Uh, this Elias guy is. You're right, he's mad interesting. Oh, dude, yeah. he's my he's my fa- he's my favorite. He's yeah. by far my favorite. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, right there, they like they ask him. They go, "You a lame? You know, you a lame Taylor?" That's his last name, Chris. They go, "You a lame Taylor?" Mm-hmm. And they go, "Nah, I ain't no lame." And they hand him some weed, and he's like, <coughs> and he starts coughing. Is that? Like, <coughs> and they all start laughing, right? Yeah. And in this group is all black dudes and hippie dudes, hippie okay. white dudes. Okay. They're all getting together. They got music playing. You know what I'm they're saying? Having it's time. having a good time. But it's they're all hippies and black people. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes, I know exactly what you're saying. Okay? Yeah. It's a mindset. One of the guys in this crew Jesus. has no lines yet in this movie. Has not had a line yet in this movie. A young child, Johnny Depp. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. He's just so it's fucking kind of extra. Yeah. Jesus, does he have any lines in the movie? Yeah, he has some. Okay, okay. Whoa. But this is the first time you see him and you're like, that's Johnny Depp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. Barely recognize him. You have to know he's Anaconda because he, okay. yeah, he's a kid. Okay. He's a kid. Uh, so they're all getting high. They're all, I mean, they're getting high as shit. Right then Elias walks up and he has like this adronimous way about him. Right. You say he's just like he's just a cool, you know, hippie kind of cat, man. You okay. know, and uh, he comes up and he goes, "You feel good?" What was that word? Adronimus. Adronimus. You know what I mean? The word like adronimus, when a guy is like like a David Bowie or a Prince kind of nigga. Adronimus. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that's what you meant, but I had to hear. That's you. his okay. vibe, like the way he looks, okay. the way all of them kind of look, because they all are just they. You could tell they're all into funk music okay. and like. Whatever, this is also what's going on in America. In America, right. So this is a... Uh, the big split in the actual America. Yeah, yeah. And the kind of person, the kind of sergeant, you can see Elias is to the kind of sergeant we'll get to. Yeah. Barnes is. Yeah. Which you can already tell what tell. kind of... Yeah. You already know. He's more hardline conservative. Mm-hmm. He's a real people. Yep. So he uh, he goes, you know, you feel good? After he takes the weed from him. And Chris is like, yeah, my neck, no more pain in my neck even. And he goes, well, feeling good is good enough, brother. And he laughs. And then he points this gun right in his face. Elias. And his Chris is like, 
And he goes, put your mouth on this. Chris is like, and then Elias goes, into the barrel. And then Chris goes, and then they all go, <laughs> and because bro, they're getting high with opiate. Like they ain't just, they getting like, and you, they're like, they're zooted. Yeah. Zooted. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I told you, bro, you couldn't so have guessed this movie. dark. But I like. I'd have been hanging with these guys. Yeah, I would have been. Yeah, I'm not in the other camp. I'm, let's go get oh, high. You reading your Bibles. Let's go get fucking yeah. high. If I'm gonna die tomorrow, yeah, I'm gonna feel the fucking sun tonight, baby. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Are you kidding me? Like, oh, I'm doing heroin and shit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm well. doing it. I'm dead I'm here. already. I'm dead. Yeah, I've always wanted to do heroin when I was like 80. Let's. Oh, I'm dead. I'm eight, I'm 18 and I'm about to die. Yeah, give me the heroin, go. baby. Let's do it. <laughs> so, also, I, I kind of want to forget what I saw today too. Yeah, I saw my I homie that. die this morning. I, I want to forget. Yeah, give me high. So in the other tent, the guys are doing what, Asan? Complaining about the guys oh, getting the, high. Yes. Now, who's in this tent? You got Junior over here. He's one of the black guys who's not in that crew. Okay. But he, the Johnny Depp, you know, not Johnny Depp, Johnny from Entourage, mm-hmm. he's like complaining about how they get high. Whoop, whoop, whoop. The Junior guy, even though he's not over there smoking with them, he's explaining to him why they're doing it. Right. Like, hey, man, you know, the black man has a free mind. That's why they're over there doing it. They're getting their minds free. It ain't, you know, it ain't really getting high. They're like, he's telling them the truth. It's like, dude, those motherfuckers over there expanding their brains in ways that y'all don't even understand. Right. So don't just judge them like they're over there just zooting up. They're right. not, you know? And then uh, he's telling them maybe you guys, maybe a lot of you guys need to try it. Because that, that, y'all are the ones who need that. And the giant dude's like, man, hell no. I'm, I heard that the fucking gooks are the ones putting those chemicals in that grass they're smoking. It makes you passive. It makes you not want to fight them and stuff. He believes it though. It wasn't yeah, like he was I saying know, like a joke. I know, I know, I know, I know. That's like that's a that's a good, that's a good propaganda right there. If you don't, that's the reason that I spoke. He's also he's, he's talking about weed. Yeah. And he's like, oh, it makes those guys more because that's because the other guys say things like, oh, we shouldn't be in this war. They, I mean, you hear when their conversation, right? And this guy, like, and he's like, oh, you guys can't stand that shit. Even though these guys are your brothers and they fight with you, you just don't like that their brains are in a different place. Yeah, their brains aren't like kill, kill. Or no, like their brains fight, are like, man, fight. let me get out of this, though. Yeah, this is crazy. It's wrong morally. What are we doing here? But I'm not gonna let my brother die in front of. It's like yeah. a, it's a weird. That's why I'm smoking weed. That's why I'm getting high, because none of this is all bull. Also, I've realized that this is all bullshit. Yeah, that is the danger of smoking weed. Do and heroin, that. I can imagine. And once you start getting that bullshit. crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, well, like, I, I can see the advantages of both mindsets, though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, right then, remember the Lieutenant Wolf guy, the bitch boss? Or yeah. Something? He comes in. I, I wrote he's actually I wrote down bitch boss a lot. That's <laughs> because I don't know what to call him. This is how lame he is. You know, everybody else has their grundy ass uniforms on or no shirts. They all look dirty, filthy, headbands tied up. Right. This guy comes in with his pants, belt, and a tucked in Ohio State University shirt. The wardrobe, how without him saying a word, how much can you not be one of the guys? Yeah, right. They didn't finish high school. You're coming in with my look how I graduated Ohio State. Okay, okay. So he was sort of put in this position just from the beginning. Oh, of course. Okay. This guy's not a real fucking soldier. Yeah, okay. But the, when you see him and you see how he's dressed with the shirt tucked in and it looks all nice, when everybody else looks like they're in the Vietnam War, Yeah. you can see probably why, oh, man, that's a problem. Yeah, it's a disconnect. People are not going to want to listen to you. Who's going to want to listen to you? Yeah. When they got these motherfuckers like, hey, maybe the, maybe I'm more Team Barnes or maybe I'm more Team Elias or maybe I'm more Team O'Neal, but right. I'm listening to them way before I'm listening to you. Right. All day. Those guys are out there. So he's drinking a beer and he's trying to hang with the guys. And they're, they're all like, because they all, you know, they're drinking whiskey and stuff. And they're like, hey, so, you know, we're not supposed to be drinking this. I'm looking at it and like kind of making fun of talking to you. And he's like, oh, oh, I'll have a sip too, right? And like, they're all kind of like, okay, like, right? And then Barnes and O'Neill, they're playing cards with a bunch of other guys as they drink. And he sits down and says, like, hey, you mind if I play with you? They're like, hey, why don't you sit? They go, hey, uh, Lieutenant, why don't you sit down and play with us? And he's like, oh, you guys are just rating me and take all my money. And they laugh and start being like, hell yeah. And they can start like, Making fun of how much of a bitch he is, yeah, and like cracking all these jokes, and he's laughing at first, like, huh? and then they keep going, and he gets mad, and no, he doesn't get mad. Uh. He does what a real bitch does. Goes, huh. you know what? Actually, guys, I think I should be, uh, I think I should be getting back to to my tent. But you, you guys keep on playing, and they all like laugh, and then as he walks out, O'Neill's like, man, what a fucking pussy motherfucker, right? Like, and as you know what I'm saying, like, no, right. he didn't get mad at He went the other way. Yeah, he he got out. <laughs> But you see what kind of man we're talking about. You can right. see you can see him clear as day, can't you? Yeah, this absolutely. guy, absolutely. Oh god, you, just a bitch, and he can't, he's hanging with real men, bro. That's the problem. It's like you you'll ne- like you said you'll never be able to get these guys on your side. No, no, and they, they've gone through a war, and you've just sort of been on the sidelines. Yeah, but you're still here. 
Mm-hmm. You're doing the fake. I want to be part of the thing. And they're like, and that's also they respect you less. We right. do that. So uh, O'Neill looks at him and goes at Barnes and he goes, "What you, so what you say, Barnes? You think he'll make it, huh?" And then Barnes doesn't say anything. And then O'Neill, all Barnes does is kind of holds out, like holds his mouth out, and O'Neill lights his cigarette for him. Very subtle showing of like how much he's his number two. Because he doesn't even ask. He just kind of goes. He's not saying, he's just going, right, boss? He ain't going to make it out here, right? He ain't got what it takes, huh? He ain't got what it takes, right, boss? There's no way, huh? And Barnes just doesn't say anything as he just smokes. And O'Neill just keeps talking. Cut back to Elias' crew, who is now listening to classic Motown music. Okay. So they're all literally just dancing with each other and singing and smiling. All right? Voice over. New Year's Day, 1968. But to us, just another day. Cut to, you know, because they're going through the jungle. Right. You know? Uh, lots of little fights lately. You know, we've not, not with each other, like against the enemy. We've dropped a lot of bombs. Firefights have been all over the place lately. On their walk, Barn notices of like a bunker, right? And he walks up on it and he, he clears it. And then they kind of look down and they find like clothes and a gun and like <clears throat> and some smoke. Like someone was just here, just, kind of shit. There, yeah. All right. Foxhole. So they get quiet. They they call it into the big boss, like the the chopper. Just you know, our position, just in case we just found something. Which, right. And they send Elias down to the bunker because he's like a Rambo. All right? Okay. He's that kind of nigga. Like a okay. Green Beret, all kind of stuff. And he's like excited about it. He's a complete, bro, this nigga, I told you he's the most interesting character. He okay. is Matthew McConaughey in True Detective. Okay. Just a lot of layers. A lot of layers. Like, lot yeah, he's a drug people would do it, but he's also the bad, he's the, ba- everyone knows he's the most badass guy there. Right. Even Even uh, Barnes knows. Yeah. Okay? Okay. Like, Barnes sends him down there. That's why Elias can talk shit. Oh, yeah. Because Barnes. He, oh, yeah. yeah. But even though you guys disagree on everything idealistically, right? Everything, but you're both still sorry. You're both still fucking leaders. You're sergeants. That's why all these guys respect a lot. That's why even the other guys respect a lot. because they're like, oh man, he's a bad motherfucker. Yeah, you can't guy, fuck with him. He's the guy who's gonna go down in a bunker and clear it out for us. Exactly. Right. Not everybody can do that shit. Yeah. Not even Barnes. Yeah, yeah. You know. So, but like you said, that is how uh, you said some a second ago, and it really made sense. Like, oh wow, well, how do you get those two mindsets to work together? Because you need them both. Right. You do need them both. You can't. You can't have one without the other. Mm-hmm. Yin and yang. Very separate, but very you need them n- necessary. Uh, so the, I mean, such a tight crawl space, bro. But he's going down there, right? Mm-hmm. They send Chris and another black guy to go do like a watch, like a watch in a different post. So Chris is over here and over here, and they're kind of just keeping watch, making sure, right? Nothing yeah. comes up. Uh, in another spot, these guys see that there's like a teapot still boiling, and one guy's like, "Yo, they were just here. This is spooky. I don't fucking like this shit because it's just still boiling." Right? And they're like, "Yo, okay. what the?" So they're around. Oh, I mean, yeah, it's it's close. They're like, "Oh shit." Uh, you see a cut to Elias in the bunker, and he's now like guns through, and he sees like they like th- where their doctor station was, and he sees a couple dead Vietnam guys of like them trying to work on him, but they didn't, they couldn't save him, so he's still growing through. Chris, right then, he looks down and he sees in between his legs a gigantic snake, and he goes because <gasps> it's like crawling around his legs, mm-hmm. but not like bothering him yet. But he's right. just like, but it is like a holy shit, don't it's, panic kind yeah, of snake. I, for, I also it's like oh fuck, you have to fight that as well. I'm in the jungle, I forgot. Yeah. Oh. Also, I can't fuck. scream because I can't make a note. Like, that's why he's like, <laughs> that's why I have to mention because it's like, oh, shit, you know? And Elias comes up. You see him, like, coming out of the, like, out of the bunker, and he looks up into another spot. And right as he comes up, a, a v, like, a Chinese guy start, takes off running, and he one shot, boom, fucking catch them. Right. Right? It's like, oh, that's why they sent that nigga down there. Damn. You know what I mean? Uh, and then. Also, you can say Vietnamese. You don't have to say Chinese. Oh, Vietnamese. I meant to say, yeah, I, yeah. It, it just, it's, you know, a lot of things are going to come out that aren't the right thing. Yeah, that's fair. I'm sure I'll say Korean at some point. Yeah, but, you know, it's, I'm, I'm fairly certain that this was a Vietnamese guy. If I uh, had to guess. He was Asian, so who knows. In the one spot. <laughs> what kind of Chinese are you? Are you? <laughs> Let's not get into that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> In the one spot, remember where the tea was? Mm-hmm. A guy is still going through all the stuff, and then he lifts up this one, like, little box, and <laughs> trick bomb. Right? Bomb goes off, blows his arms completely off. Oh. And he comes out and he's like, huh, and he falls. You know, arms blown off, right? Right. Elias comes back out the hole and he tells the Lieutenant Wolf guy, like, hey, this place is rolling with traps. Whoop de whoop. Uh, we have to move. We have to move now. You know, uh, I, you leave, uh, like, leave your, like, give, like, leave four of your, they, they tell, like, Elias, like, hey, leave four of your men here to keep watch. But uh, as we go looking for, like other guys, like if they're close by, so you can kill them. What's right. going on, right? So right then, Chris walks up on Barnes, who's smoking, and he just looks distraught. And they lock eyes, and Barnes like immediately, like just kind of like it's the first time you ever seen. Like the only time in the movie you see him kind of like, 
Like, this sucks. Like, this is so much. Right. You know? And he just kind of, like, goes away again. So they go off, and they're looking for, because they the reason they're looking for anybody, uh, and they're, like, panicking is because when the bomb went off, they did a count, and they can't find the other black guy who they sent on watch. Oh. So that's why they're panicking. Shit. That's, I forgot to mention that. Okay. okay. So oh, fucking shit. They can't find him. They can't find him. They finally do. Somebody goes, we found him. We found him. And then you hear the voiceover. Yeah, we did find him. We found uh, Manny about, we found Manny down the river about a thousand yards. The end of the mystery, I guess you could say. And they see his body and he's like tied up and like tortured and shit. Jesus. Completely fucked up. Jesus. And then Barnes is looking at it and he's just like, those motherfuckers. And he walks off. Jesus Christ. Cut to the next day. <clears throat> Voice over. The village we came upon the next day, he names the, it has some create, like some Kambo, like the Guangdong village or some shit, mm -hmm. had stood there before we got there that day a thousand years. Do you hear what I just said? I know. Oh, and I know what they're about to do to it. They never knew where we were coming. But at that time, Barnes was our leader, our Ahab. That day when he led us, we still loved him. All right. Voice over is over. This movie's fucking so good, dude. Just that, bro. Are y'all with me on this, bro? This movie is so fucking Damn, good, nigga. That's so sad, dude. That's so sad. It just ain't no winners. I love shit. I love that he's like, I ain't even gonna give you the mystery. I'm gonna let you know what's gonna happen before the scene happens. Yeah. Oh, fuck. And it's still gonna be the best scene in the movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I'm gonna let you know before. Yeah. Oh. That's fuck. cocky writing almost. Oh, fuck. So uh we see uh Barnes, like he we see one of their like soldiers running in the distance as they come up on this village, and he's still pissed from yesterday. He fucking bam kills one, right? As they're walking into the village, Johnny from Entourage just walks up on a pig, poof, shoots it in the head. Like, and all the other soldiers, they're all starting to get a little, they're, fe they're feeling Barnes. Yeah. They're feeling that energy of him, right. of like, I'm mad. Right. All right? So all the soldiers start going through the village's stuff, rounding up all the villagers, you know what I mean? And they're looking for hidden soldiers. Mm -hmm. they're like, they think the soldiers are hiding, like the, the ones from the camp, they think they're hiding in this, in this town, in this village. Yeah. All right? And they find a hidden bunker, and they go through it, but the only thing that's in it is like a mom and like a grandma. Okay. Like a, da a daughter, a mom, and a grandma. All okay. right, and they're all screaming. They're screaming. They're screaming. And then Barnes throws a grenade down there anyway. And the the women are screaming uncontrollably, like ah, and they're just talking in their language. They're screaming. They're screaming. Right. Chris finds or Charlie Sheen. He finds another hidden like little bunker, and he's like, "Get out, motherfucker! Get out! Get out right now!" And he's got his gun on the guy because he sees like a little kid's kind of face smiling. He's like, "Get out! You get out, you motherfucker! Get out!" And then somebody else goes, "Cool, man, be cool. They're scared." He goes, "They're scared." They're scared. I'm fucking scared. So am I. Get out, you motherfucker. And they pull him out. And it's like, a kid, he's got one leg and he kind of looks retarded. And he's with his grandma. Okay. All right. They were hiding. Okay. So cut back to, they start burning some of this village. They're burning some of them. Cut back to Chris. He's yelling at the guy he pulled out. He's like, why did you just get out? Why did you just answer me when I said get out? Huh? And he starts breaking down. Charlie Jean's like, why? And he hits him. Why? Huh? You stupid fucking asshole. You stupid motherfucker. And the guy, you can tell he's retarded because he's still like, like he's just smiling. He doesn't, right. you know. He doesn't know what's happening. Yeah, and and then Johnny, Johnny's like, kill him, do him, come on, Chris, do him, and he starts shooting at his feet. Huh? Come on, watch you dance, motherfucker, dance, dance. Charlie Sheen's just like, dance, huh? You dance, you one-legged motherfucker, you one-legged motherfucker. Ah! Ah! And he starts just crying. Oh god. Oh right. Johnny goes, you fucking pussy. He's laughing at you. Pushes him aside, right? And then O'Neal walks in. He goes, boys, forget it. Let's go. Let's go. And then right then, Johnny looks at him, and he fucking hits the retarded kid, knocks him down, then takes his gun, starts bashing his head. Poof, poof, and the grandma's screaming, ah! Poof, poof, and you see blood just squirting on all of them. Poof, bah, bah, and he's just smiling, right? And then O'Neal's like, right? And then Johnny goes, holy shit, holy shit. Y'all see the head come apart like that? Oh, man, I've never seen brains like that before. Fuck. And then he looks at the grandma and he's like, I bet this bitch knows something too. I bet this bitch runs the whole show probably. Probably knows where all these motherfuckers are. She probably killed Manny. This fucking bitch. And he's you, you, bro. Oh, whoa. Whoa. O'Neal's like, whoa. I said, let's go. Even O'Neal, you know, he's even like, let's go. Come on! Like, the, and he goes, boys, no one saw anything. Let's go. And then Johnny turns around, like, no, fuck that. Fuck that, Sarge. Let's do this whole village, man. Come on. Cut back to 
we see them bring a Vietnamese guy to Barnes, right? And they have Depp question him because Depp speaks the language. Okay. So this is where this is the lines Depp has. Okay. You're asking if he has lines. These are the lines. Okay. Uh, this is more than lines. This is a whole scene. Oh, he got a scene. He got to be part of a scene. He got to be part of one of the greatest uh, scenes in movie history. Jesus Christ. Because also you're like, how does this end? Oh, God. And then he opens his chocolate factory. <laughs> dun, 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 and you hear the Pirates oh, yeah, of the Caribbean like, music. Oh, wow. What's happening? <laughs> so they start questioning him, right? Mm-hmm. He says, you know, they... They they Depp questions him and then he says something and then Depp says he says that the rice is you know it's not for the soldiers but it's for the village and the Barnes goes bullshit who are the weapons for then they were hiding weapons who are the weapons for you know and then now you start hearing all the other soldiers who are on Barnes like kill him boss kill that motherfucker kill him they don't talk they'll fucking talk when you kill him kill him right right then the woman who who jumps up she's screaming like the, the like his wife mm-hmm. like she's screaming 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 right and uh. The soldiers are still like, you know, kill him, kill him, come on. And then uh, she keeps screaming, screaming. And then Barnes goes, what is she saying? And then Depp goes, she's saying that it's not them, that the soldiers kill them and rape them and steal from them too. And that, they're, that all everyone who lives here is just farmers. We're just trying to make a living. Please leave us alone. Johnny, so that Depp says that to Barnes. Yeah. But she's still screaming. Let me die, go back, hold me die, hold me die, 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 die. It's pretty good. It's a pretty good impression. And... But worse is how proud your face was when you were doing it. It's pretty good. That was the worst part. Oh my God, God, God. This, look, this woman is oh screaming for her husband's life. Her life, she, her way of life is ruined, and you're just like oh, okay, come on, yeah, <laughs> and you're so happy about it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> so fucking. It's how you feel when you say racist stuff. Oh, uh, I feel. I mean, I didn't, I didn't say I didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> so she's screaming, screaming. You know. Uh. Okay, so yeah, yeah. She's the, having a rough day. Yeah, she's screaming, screaming. Mm-hmm. The soldiers are all split. But Sergeant, we need to get out of here and leave us alone. Yo, kill him, boss. Kill him. Let's fucking waste this fucking village. These motherfuckers killed Manny. Yeah. She's like, bah, 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 bah. right then Barnes goes, and he walks up and he just fucking shoots her in the head. Boom. Complete silence. And she just falls. Of course, now her husband. You know, yeah. all the villagers. Yeah, because now they're getting up like, what the? Oh, you know, like, oh, are they about to just start shooting us in the fucking head? Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, of course, all the other soldiers are like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Barnes is just looking at him, right? The guy is kneeling by his wife, just screaming, screaming. You know, uh, he yells to Depp. He goes, Depp, tell them all. I'll waste more if they don't fucking tell me where the soldiers are. Tell them now. Right? And everybody's still screaming, still screaming. Like other school soldiers, she's like, fucking Barnes, let's kill this village. Let's kill them all. God, other soldiers, guys, what the fuck are we doing? Relax, relax. Right then, Barnes grabs the guy's daughter. Because, you know, there's a daughter and, a, and him okay. screaming over this mom. Okay. He grabs the daughter, puts his gun right to her head. Tell him. Tell him I'll fucking kill her. Tell him right now. Don't fucking lie to me. Right. And the guy's like, ah, bah, ah, bah, ah, bah, ah, like just screaming. Like, and he, Depp's, he's like, he's saying he doesn't know. Depp's like, honestly, he's saying he doesn't know. He's saying he doesn't know. Because you remember, Depp's one of the drug guys. Yeah. He's saying he doesn't know. Right then, you hear, Barnes! It's Elias. Everybody stops and turns. Because Barnes wasn't around. He came and he has his gun. Barnes! What the fuck are you doing? Barnes puts his gun down and looks at him. You stay out of this, Elias. You ain't no firing squad, you motherfucker! Boom! Barnes, Elias starts beating Barnes' ass. Bop, bop, hands! Bop, 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 they're on the ground. You motherfucker, I'll kill you! Barnes is like, yeah, they're pulling him apart. Okay, it takes the whole squad, bro. So now the villagers are just watching this. Like, what the fuck is this the, day? The whole squad, God, they're just, and Elias is like, come on! Come on! And then Barnes is like, I'm gonna kill you, Elias! I'm gonna fucking kill you! You know, they're, ah, everybody's screaming, you're dead! Right then, the big captain, like the, the Lieutenant Wolf, goes, everybody, shut up. Shut the fuck up. Listen up. We're going to fucking clear out of here. Burn this village. We're moving on. Elias goes, what? He goes, that's what we're doing. And Elias says, oh, shut up, Wolf. He looks at him. He goes, why didn't you do something? Why didn't you do something? And Wolf goes, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't even know. What do you mean why did I do something? I don't even know what you're talking about. And Elias looks at him. He's like, you fucking coward. You know what the fuck I'm talking about. And he walks off. 
Elias ain't your favorite character, bro. Holy shit. Elias ain't your favorite character, bro. What the fuck? When, you didn't get goosebumps when Elias goes, Barnes! Because he comes in, because you're like, because you almost forget. Uh, yeah. Oh, like, I, the whole time I was like, oh, I, the whole time when, after he killed the guy, I was like, oh, I think Elias is going to play a big part in whatever, whatever's about to he happen. He ain't going to play this. Yeah. He ain't going to play this, bro. Period. He also ain't scared of you. Yeah. This is what this this is. Elias is really what that unit needed in that moment. Someone to stand up to Barnes. Because Barnes was about well, to. Well, they're about to kill every single person in the village. Yeah, for no reason. They didn't know anything. They didn't know anything. Clearly. Clearly. You think the guy's going to say that with his kid's life in your hands? Hell no. You just killed his wife. He also not. He, you're not bluffing. Yeah. I know you're not bluffing. Mm -hmm. Dude, there's no. It's where they fucking come here. They rape us, kill us, and steal from us, too. Why wouldn't they? Yeah. They're you. Idiot. So, uh, the right then the cap, you know, like you said, they they all, you know, the Lieutenant Wolf guy, they burn all the weapons, they burn all the rice, and they just move out. They tear their whole village down, right? The woman's just dead on the ground. They leave her. You know what I mean? Uh, they ruin, like, the, everything. Uh, Sad-ass music's playing. The people are just watching as their village just gets burned, and they're just getting rounded up, putting ropes and shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, as Chris is walking, he's kind of like walking away from it all. He hears screams. Mm -hmm. ah, 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 and he kind of speeds up. Ah, 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 and then he comes up, and the men are just raping this woman. Just raping the shit out of her. It's Johnny. It's Junior. It's another guy. That you wouldn't. That was like one of the guys who smoked weed, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, and then another guy. Like, three of them are watching as one's just raping him and she's screaming. As they're, and they're holding the daughter. Like, this other girl is clearly her daughter. Like, oh, she's going to be next. Like, she's clearly going to be next. Like, because they're just holding her there. And she's just watching her mom get raped. Right? And then he goes, fucking, Chris goes, hey, hey! And he fucking knocks the dude off. She's a fucking human being! She's a fucking human being! And they're like, oh, you fucking homo. And he's putting, is he fucking homo? And Johnny's like, oh, man, what the fuck's wrong with you? He's like, you fucking animals! You're fucking animals! And he's like, and they're like, oh, this place ain't for you, bitch. You ain't, this place is Vietnam ain't meant for you, you fucking pussy. And he just like walks off and she's like, you guys just don't get it. And right then Elias walks up and he's like, hey, get the fuck up and get out of there now. And they all go. They, like they all go and then they fucking scatter and then you hear one guy go, oh, boys, easy up, ease up your dicks. Let's get out of here, right? Like, yeah. Like, all right. Elias said it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. It's one of the most powerful fool on scenes. From there to there that I've ever seen. Heavy. So ridiculously heavy. So as they leave, it's all burning behind them. You see all the Chinese people kind of in ropes Vietnamese. walking. Vietnamese people <laughs> in ropes walking. And as some of the kids are just being carried by the soldiers. The visual is insane. Also, it looks so real. Does it make sense? I feel you. It's like you had to almost, I was like, oh, this nigga saw this. Because the the idea of like oh, who would think to be like oh no the sol the the soldiers are carrying the kids right? Who would think that? They're carrying them like on the thing like this. Some of them, you know what I mean, like this on their shoulders, like you know what I mean, like this. Just carrying them. Why are they taking them? So they get back to the big base camp. Okay. And Elias is telling the big boss, like the, the head captain, you know what I mean, uh, at the base camp. Right, that uh, you know, he tells him everything that happened. Barnes is standing right there, and they're both you know, like you know, I'm gonna file a file a full report. Uh, this guy is a fucking criminal, and then Barnes goes, I didn't do anything. He's a goddamn liar, Captain. And I and I promise that I have people that'll vouch for my story too. And he he tells both of them, Shut up, shut up right now. You two you two will cease fire on each other. I will not have this in my camp. But he looks at it, he goes, Barnes, I will do a full investigation. And if I find out there was any illegal killing going on, you will be prosecuted and you will serve, serve life in prison when you return to the States. Do you understand? Yes, sir. But until then, we still got fucking jobs to do here. Because they do. It's like we still got shit to yeah. do here and shit to accomplish. Yeah. All right? Focus on the mission. You two will back off of each other. Is that a fucking order? And then they're both like, yes, sir. And they walk off. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> Something tells me they're not going to back off. Ooh, how could they, man? That yeah. was real. Yeah. Uh, so the guys are all, the black guys are all talking together. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, one of the black guys you also recognize, too. Uh, he, he's been in a million movies as well. I think he was in Chucky. I think he was the black guy in Chucky. Remember there was a black guy in Chucky who was Chucky's partner, and he goes and he kills him? Yes. Pretty sure it's that actor. Okay. All right, so he's one of the actors. So it's him, uh -huh. Forrest Whitaker, the King guy, the Jigga. They're all talking. And uh, 
one guy, you know, that one guy thinks Elias is right. One guy thinks Barnes is right. One, you know, like, hey, Barnes has gotten through all, you know, I, he's like, I've been under Barnes for a long time. That dude's gotten me through some shit. Right. I listened to him. And, and it wasn't like, oh, he's a monster. It was like on that kind of way of like, man, hey, let me, like, I know, hey, Bar- he, like, hey, I know, because the guy even said, I know you might be a monster sometimes, but that guy will get us through. I promise. Like, you got to stick with him. But if you've got, if he's gotten you through like five or six times, you would believe that. Yeah. I mean, I, I would feel confident under either of these guys. Or not confident. I feel like I'd be like, okay. No, if you're under Barnes, you don't. I mean, yeah, it's scary and it sucks and all this shit. But you're like, man, this nigga will get me through. Mm-hmm. He's not like, gonna leave me behind. You I know feel what I like mean? Elias like, is the same way. Elias like, is the exact same way. Yeah. Oh, I, I feel this. I'm just saying. I just meant like, cause of Barnes, you'd be like more be like, oh my god, it's way more of a totalitarian. Whereas a guy like Elias, like, oh, this guy doesn't even give a shit. Yeah. So I, they, the, I get why the feelings, mm-hmm. but. Yeah, I'm definitely on the team Elias. Yeah, I'm on team Elias. <laughs> no question. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and then they asked Forrest Whitaker what he thinks, and he goes, "Man, I'm just hurting real bad inside, y'all." And he puts his head down. Very. Also, you see, it's like that one line, like, "Oh, this guy can act." Like whoever saw Forrest Whitaker do that line was like, "We gotta put oh, this guy's stuff. This yeah. guy's got. Oh, he's got something. Yeah. Whoever this kid is, he's got some chops." So, Barnes tells the bitch boss. Mm-hmm. How Elias is a fucking politician. He shouldn't be here. He's a fucking water washing Democrat. You know what I mean? All this shit. He's you know he's a bitch, uh, right? And then O'Neill, of course, is on his side, and Johnny's on his side. Right. You know they're both like, yeah, fucking yeah. Uh, Elias is he's a rat. We should frag that motherfucker. They even say that shit. Fuck him. He's a, he's, he's ratting on you. Also, he's a rat, which is I mean obviously that would cause Tension. that would be the biggest problem. Yeah, I did think like, why is Elias doing this? Why is Elias going to the big boss? Elias is done with it all, mm. and Elias isn't scared of him. That's a good point. This is a, I think I, I think Elias is done with him. Just from the the way he was yelling at him and the way he was like, bro, I'm so done with your shit. I'm so sick of your shit. Also, you got to remember Elias' dude died in the beginning of the movie. Remember? It, like, oh, yeah. Like, they're, they're, it goes deep. It's like, man, you keep putting us on the front because you want me to take the lead and I'm cool with that, but my men keep dying and it's never fair. It's a lot of shit going on, man. Right, you have this guy sucking up to you all the time. Yeah, and, and he's the other sergeant, so it's always two on one. Right. Every vote's two on one. Right. Like, no, if you throw in all those other factors, yeah, man, he might be like, man, I'm done with this fucking, and I just saw him kill an innocent woman, we almost killed off, we burned down a whole village for no fucking reason, I'm sick of this shit. Creating your I'm, own enemies, creating more enemies for ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> but, on to play, to your, you are right, maybe not the time to do it. Yeah, I, you know what I mean, it's. You are dealing with a dictator-like mentality. Tattling is also a no-win situation, almost always. Until it's time. Yeah. You tattle when you get back. Like the the moment y'all get back to base like base camp for real and y'all aren't still in the actual thing, right? Oh, oh, bro, you're going to prison. I didn't forget. Yeah, you're going yeah. to fucking prison, dude. You know. So, uh, O'Neill goes. Barnes. Uh, he goes. You think there's gonna be an investigation when you get home? You know, uh, Sarge to Barnes. This is O'Neill. He's like, you think there's gonna be an investigation? You really think they're gonna take you in? And then Barnes looks at him and he he doesn't say anything, but he kind of looks like like he's questioned, like he doesn't know either. Mm-hmm. All right. So that night, Chris and Elias are hanging out and they're talking. And Elias is looking up, and Elias is telling him, "Man, I love the stars." He's like, "Why?" Elias is like, "Ah, no right or no wrong. They're just there. I love it." And he goes, "Man, Barnes really has it in for you, Elias." And he goes, "Ah, Barnes just believes in what he's doing. That's all." And he goes, "Do you? Do you believe in what you're doing?" Elias thinks, and he goes, yeah, in 65, but now, no. He's 68. Oof. That's also because Elias has been Barnes before. Mm. See, the, that's what I got from that. I was like, I, I've been him. I like yeah. I believe the cause. I believe the cause, and I believe this shit. And I yeah. and I would have probably shot that villager in the head too. And now he's like, oh, this is all crap. And he goes. He looks at him. He goes, "What happened today, kid? It's just the beginning. We're gonna lose this war." And then Sheen goes, "What? No, not us. We're gonna think we're gonna lose, kid. We kicked ass for so long. It's about time we got ours kicked, don't you think?" Yeah, this, this, like I said, this is why I don't know much about it. <laughs> Stay off it. Uh, people love the third Harry Potter book. It's one of my least favorites. Which one? You gotta tell me. The Prison of Azkaban. That's the best movie. You know why? Because that's the first time Harry Potter loses a Quidditch match. And that affected old nine-year-old me so hard. Wow. That affected nine-year-old me so hard. Would you agree that that is one of the better, if not the best movie? 
It's a great movie. I mean, the book, the the story is actually amazing. I mean, that's when it's they bring in Sirius Black. It's one of the better books too. <laughs> that's when they bring in Sirius Black, right? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's why Sirius I love Black. that book. That's yeah. why he's one of my favorite characters. Sirius Black, and then they have a uh, Hermione has the time turn. Oh, that's thing. the best movie. Fuck that. What are you yeah, talking yeah, about? That's yeah, the best yeah, movie. Yeah. That is by far the best. Movie. I didn't know if that was the same one. Yeah, that's the best movie, dog. Hell yeah, right, the werewolves in that movie. Yeah, yeah. The 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 beak. Oh my god, what was his name? Buckbeak. He was a hippogriff. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And the Dementors. God, they did the Dementors well. That was the best. How did you not like? Oh, never mind. You just yeah, I just said, I just said it out <laughs> loud. Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's I'm how sorry. we got here. <laughs> we just literally said like five things about how it was the best one. Yeah. And they were like, wait a minute. How did we get here in the first place? <laughs> okay. Well, you didn't, you, did you like, is it a good book though? Yeah. Like actually? Yeah. No, I mean, uh, I, the whole story is great. It's uh, Harry Potter, you yeah, know? Good point. That is true. And what's awesome about it is that the author doesn't add additional information now that the series is finished. That's my favorite part about Harry Potter. You know what? Shout out to J.K. Rowling. Trans people do deserve to die, or whatever you say. <laughs> whatever it was you said, I backed it. Yeah. <laughs> what did you say? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. People were mad at you, bitch. <laughs> yeah. I guess you might as well have had said that. Yeah. Because that's what, that's what people were mad like. Because, like, uh, I read what you said, and I was like, okay. You know why people are kind of angry, I guess, but like to be this mad is like you might as well have just said the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. If they're if they're persecuting you, like you did the, it's that there's we had a friend Anthony Grobert, and he had a joke about how like if you ever got if the people who got caught on to catch a predator, why aren't they like, hey man, if I'm gonna do the time, let me do the crime. Come on, baby, just yeah, the, just the tip of the crime, just the tip of the crime. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but yeah, that's why I feel about like JK. It's like, damn, you should have just gone all the way if you're gonna do the time. Yeah, because she the- says some shit like how like uh, she thinks men are men and women are women, and people were like. Bitch, don't you ever say that shit. <laughs> don't you ever be famous and have an opinion like that. Uh, which I don't agree with. I don't agree with them canceling J.K. Rowling because she thinks men should be men and women should be women. Now, I do agree that J.K. Rowling should be canceled for saying Dumbledore is gay. <laughs> but you said Dumbledore's gay? Cancel her. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's like, well, just why are you adding more information post-story? Why are you doing this? Why? There's, you know, we've already taken the story for what it is, and then you find out, oh, Severus, Severus Snape was actually a baboon the whole time. And you're like, what? <laughs> why? That'd be like him. That'd be like uh, them coming out, uh, Oliver Stone right now, and being like, also, William Defoe beat dogs before he got into the war. Yeah. Like, and it'd be like, well, look. I, okay. Like, I, I, know you, I, I know you said that made me think I wouldn't feel different, but I feel different. Yeah, it's like I, I don't yeah. know what. <laughs> no, I just it had I, nothing to do with anything. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like I never, I never ever once thought about Dumbledore's sexuality, and now it's like, oh, I think about that when I think about Dumbledore. And you know what else I think? Every time I think he's not gay. That's what I think. Because as much as you say he's gay, I can say he's not because you said it after the fact. That's how that works. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you published the book and then you decided to be like, oh, he's gay. Well, nope. I think he's a dinosaur. That's how I read it. <laughs> he's a dinosaur. <laughs> so how can he be gay? He's a, he's a lizard. Yeah. <laughs> you fucking idiot. That's how you sound. <laughs> like, why would you do that? Yeah. Just let people, because you know what? There's a, probably a bunch of people who read that. It's like, oh, this guy might be gay. Yeah. And you just let them have it. And other people read it like, man, Dumbledore gets mad pussy. Yeah. Let him have that. Yeah. Who gives a shit? <laughs> if you want him to be gay, fucking say it. <laughs> yeah, during the story. Yeah. Make say, oh, happen. by the way, after Dumbledore did this thing with Harry, he went and got gang banged by two black guys. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Oh, wow. And okay. he enjoyed it. Awesome. I'm not mad at him. Yeah, good for him. Mm-hmm. But I'm not letting him have it now. Yeah. But then again, you shouldn't be canceled, you know, for thinking women are women and men are men. <laughs> That's also a thing. You got, you know, guys, there's always two things. Always remember that. I think the the overall thing right now is that if you are a celebrity, just don't say anything. Ever. Yeah. This is that's done. That's done. You won. You became celebrity. Congratulations. Here's your money. Eh, just shut up. <laughs> just shut up. Cause look, look, should you be should you be cruel? Because th- th- this was JK's overall opinion. It was, I think men are men, women are women, but I still stand for trans people. Because I'm a fag. Yeah, sure. She's gay. Is she? Yeah. I didn't know that. I thought she was. Maybe I made that up. Yeah. But you know what? Stand for facts. I stand for them too. Yeah. (laughs) Either way, she said men are men, women are women. That's what I believe, but I'm with trans people. I'm on your side. I'm on your team. And it's like, sure. That is your opinion. Right now... Why the fuck <laughs> did the world need that opinion? 
That's not, A, that's not even the, that's not really what we're talking about. And B, why? Just why? It's like a why? Drew Brees thing. Yeah, it's why? It's like, hey, bro, no one cared. No yeah. one, you didn't have, to, you were literally doing an interview for Yahoo Finance. Could have said next question. <laughs> you could have said anything. <laughs> it just, it just, it just didn't make sense for her to just tweet that. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Back to the voiceover. Okay. Day by day, the struggle for my sanity continues. I don't know what's right and wrong anymore. There's a civil war going on between the platoon. Half with Elias, half with Barnes. We're fighting each other, and we should be fighting them. <sighs> Hope things are well back home. Chris. So don't you love the voiceover with the letter? Yeah, this is Great devolving. Writing. This is devolving. The situation is devolving fast. So the big bitch boss says, all right, guys, move out. Mm-hmm. They're moving out. One guy, the black junior guy, he's about to drink some water. And they go, hey, don't drink that. You'll get malaria. And he's like, Psh, I hope so. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, right then, someone gets shot. <laughs> they get an ambush. Full-on firefight. <laughs> and they're like, oh, shit, they were waiting for us. They were, fuck. And then right, Barnes is just walking. Even though there's a full fire, he's just still walk through it. Get some firepower in there, you assholes! Just t- like walking through the gunfight. Crazy. All right? You see Chris, he's crawling to the guy who was hit like in the beginning of the, the firefight. As right then, Elias runs up on the big boss and says how oh, he can outflank him. Just give him three men. He'll go around the side and outflank him. Right then, Barn comes up and tells him his plan. Right? And he's like, I think we should do this. Fuck all that. Elias is like, no, I, I need three men. You shut up right now, you fucking rat bitch. You're a rat, all right? You do that shit back home, but out here, you listen to me. I'm in charge. And Elias is like, oh, fuck you. And then, like, somebody kind of starts shooting at him, and they kind of all kind of have to scatter on their own. Okay. All right? So Chris throws his grenade. He kills a couple uh, gooks. And then also, the words on the screen. Uh, really? <laughs> yeah. They, I mean, oh, you did it with subtitles. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> they start. Uh, all of a sudden, you, you see. Remember the wolf guy when they were arguing, when they were talking. He was calling some men with coordinates. Right. Okay. So right then, the, the the coordinates he was drawing, you start seeing the short rounds get dropped, and they're hitting his guys. Like he fucked up. All right. So Barnes is now going, "What the fuck's going on?" And he's fucking like one of his guys gets hit, and he has to literally cut the frag out of the guy's body. Like it's fucking vicious, right? As Forrest Whitaker's trying to run away from him, he fucking trips on a tripwire, and his legs. Pfft, get blown off as that happens chris runs back up and he finds johnny depp who's dying and he fucking picks him up and he takes him out like you know the scene of forrest gump where remember he runs all the guys out out of the kind of so he does that with this guy right all right and he takes johnny depp's out and johnny sets him down and johnny depp's like as he's bleeding out don't leave me (laughs) don't leave me don't leave me don't leave me and they're like i got it and then right then elias is like i need you 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 come with me to do elias's plan right and he's like he's like just sit here okay someone's gonna come for you as other people come and they're all like now because they now know like oh we're gonna meet up here like this is gonna be our safe spot right all right so elias and his guys take off barnes Goes off on the bitch lieutenant. He finds him. You fucking killed men. You put in the wrong coordinates. You fucking idiot. You fucking bitch. You pussy. You fucking. And he's just all. You know what I mean? Because he. I mean, I, I, I'm also on his side. Barnes right. is so right on this one. Right. Like you fucking pussy. This whole time you've been an asshole, and the one time you could be an asset, you fuck it up. Yeah, it's like, dude. Also, just like, can you be a soldier for two? Fucking seconds. seconds. Yeah. So right then Barnes gets the phone. He's like, check fire. Check fire. Those are not the right coordinates. Check fire. You know? Right then uh, you see Elias, Elias, Chris, and the crew. They form a line. Like Elias tells the three guys, hey, form a line. Shoot anything that gets through. They kind of like come like off to like they go off on their own, right? Right. Shoot anything that gets through. Because uh, if, if they do, if anyone does get through, we're completely fucked. We're not going to have any fucking cover. All right. So form this line. No one gets through. And they're like, where are you going? He's like, I'm going to go down by the river where they think they're going to outflank us and I'll catch them before they do. You know, he's a badass dog. Lies is a badass. Chris Pat- goes tactical. Oh, dude. mastermind. He knows it. Chris goes. Well, should I come with? And Elias smiles and goes, "No, I move much faster alone." <laughs> he's gone. Like Batman. Yep. Just takes off. Mm-hmm. Right. So Barnes uh, tells another guy, like you know where Johnny Depp was, like where, like so now they're dropping off all the bodies that they can't find. And Barnes tells <coughs> another guy, like what his plan is. We're gonna go in here and get everybody out. And that guy goes, "Hey, what about Elias? He just took three guys to go outflank somebody." We should go get him. And he goes, don't worry about it. I'll go get him. You make sure everybody's here for when this chopper comes. There's a chopper coming to get everybody out. Right. All right? And he goes, so you just make sure you haul ass and get here. Go get some more guys out, but be here. All right? Don't worry about them. I'll go get them. Right. Okay. Okay? Don't trust that. 
So we see some Vietnamese guys coming up on Chris and like you know his crew that the Elias brought, and they fucking light him up. And he goes, "I got two of those fuckers, man." And the other guy goes, "I got one, I got one." And they're like, "Yeah!" And they start to run off, and they realize the other one of their other like this, the other guy got hit. Okay. Like, ah, ah. And they're like, "Oh shit, fuck!" You know, right then Barnes comes up, and he goes, "Hey, where's Elias?" And they go, "He's down there." He went to go out flank him. They go, "All right." And he goes, "All right, you guys get this guy back. I'll go get him." All right, we got choppers on them. We got choppers out there, and they go. And then Chris like, "I'll help you go get Elias." He goes, "No, get this man back to camp. I'll go get Elias. You boys move." So they take off. Elias, you're about, Elias is about to die, huh? Elias is about to fucking die. So we see Elias. He's doing his gangster creep through the fog. Just fucking right. He's all alone. I mean, bro, we're talking about so many Vietnamese dudes. He comes up on like a crew of them, right? <laughs> Kills one. They're like, "What the fuck?" Comes from another angle, like Rambo. Kills two more. And he's gone again. And they're like, what the? F-? Kills two more. <laughs> Bro, he, I, he, when I say he's so cold, fool, it's like, like, damn, this nigga is like, straight up like how Rambo was doing it too, just that, like, he's never not moving. That's why you can't, mm-hmm. he's always running the whole time. He's like a pickle Rick and El Tigre. Or whatever. Yes, bro. Yeah, that's what it feels like. Just, and just taking him out, too. Yeah. Two, yeah, one, yeah, yeah. two, just like that, little, little by little. He's fucking these dudes up. Right. All right. Finally, Chris gets the hurt guy back, right? And he looks at the woods like he's waiting for Barnes and Elias, and then he just takes off. He's like, he's like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go fucking help. Right? You know what I mean? So we see Barnes pointing his gun as he's walking. He's quiet. He's looking for Elias. Right? Finally, you see something out of the bushes creep out, and it's Elias. Mm-hmm. And he starts walking forward, and they see each other, because you know Barnes is like this. He's looking for, him. and Elias sees him, and he goes. Smiles like that big smile that we've seen the whole movie, right? Big smile, and it's quiet. And Barnes' gun doesn't drop, and then it goes back to Elias, and his eyes are like, pop, pop, pop! Shoots him three times. Elias goes down. I went well. Now I hate Barnes. <laughs> Now I hate Barnes. I want to be like, I get Barnes and I like him. I would be on his team, but I like him. And now I hate this guy. You're like, fuck this dude. Fuck this dude. Fuck this dude. I hope Chris saw the whole thing. So right then, as Barnes is walking out, Chris comes up and he goes, hey, hey, where's Elias? Elias is dead. Let's go. What? He's dead? What? Fall back. He's go. Let's go. Come on. Where where is he? He's about 10 meters back. But I said, let's go. But you saw him? He's dead. He's dead. There are gooks everywhere. Move. And he grabs him and like throws him. And like now he's like. Cause you know Chris is, he's, you know it's Barnes still. And he's yeah. So you know he's like what? So now they're moving. They get on the chopper, right? They're getting everyone out, and they're getting all the dead bodies they can get on it too. Mm-hmm. Chopper goes up. They start leaving. Chris looks down. <gasps> like they're already in the air, and he looks down. He sees some. He, he like you don't see what he sees. He just look. He goes, "It's Elias." Barnes leans over and like looks down. He's like, <gasps> "You see fucking full speed with a hundred fucking Asian dudes, a hundred gooks after him." Our boy Elias, nigga, slow motion, <laughs> taking bullets. <laughs> you remember the scene from *Tropic Thunder*? Yeah, it's making fun of that scene. But this oh, is—I yeah. mean, this is one of the most classic. This is like one of the most classic movie scenes of all time. Okay. okay. The, the last image is like the most one of the most famous images in movie history. So he's running, <laughs> gets hit, he falls, crawls, gets up, starts running again, but just getting hit, bro. But he keep this nigga maybe takes fifteen. Like I mean, just like oh wow, this is what it takes to kill this guy. Yeah. Straight up, this is one. Of, it's a soldier. Yeah, and this guy is. Captain Soldier. Captain Soldier. Yeah. Fucking running, just getting hit, getting hit. Elias, right? They're trying to get it, but there's no way the choppers can get to him. Right? He's just taking, bullet, taking bullets. And then he starts crawling, and he finally raises his hands up. And this is like one of the most famous shots in movies history. You've probably seen it. He's looking up like this, and then he gets hit like, like that, like from the back. Like that, like. And then he just falls. In slow motion. This is all in slow motion. That, but that, that, this, like, where he's getting hit like this and his hands are up, yeah. it's one of the most famous shots in movie history. Okay. You know? Uh, so he falls. Like, it's on the cover of a lot of, you know, it's like one of the, it's a crazy shot. Mm-hmm. So Chris, right then, he looks up, and he makes eye contact with Barnes, and now him and Barnes are just staring at each other. Great shot. You know, they're just, just yeah. locked eyes, because they both know. They both know. All right? So they get back to the base, and Chris is telling the other guys, Elias' homies in their bunker, Yeah, man, he fucking killed him. Barnes killed him. They're like, oh, you ain't got no proof, man. I don't need no proof. 
he fucking killed him. I know he did. You know what I mean? And they're like, oh, you know, he's like, we should, and they're like, ah, oh, what do we do? He's like, you know, we should frag that motherfucker. We should kill him. This is bullshit. He fucking killed Elias. And he goes, man, if you, if you bring that shit to anybody else or you bring that to Barnes, he's just going to shove it back up your ass. Right? He goes, it's over for Elias. He left. He's in heaven now. And hopefully he's up there high as shit and drunk as fuck and dancing his ass off. He left all his pain down here. It's over. Let it go. I get what this guy's saying. Yeah. It's like, bro, you got to. Like, they know you, this is different, bro. This is war. It hurts, but it's old. He let it go. Even if he did do it, what are we going to do? You know what I'm saying? It's like one yeah. of those situations. It's like, no, no, fuck that. Barnes is a murderer. Whoop de whoop. And then the guy, another guy looks at him. He's like, man, you're the one who said you admired Barnes when you first got here. I remember you saying that. He goes, yeah, but I was wrong. And then another guy grabs him. Let me tell you something about Barnes. That motherfucker's been shot seven times. Seven. And he ain't dead yet. You know why? Because Barnes ain't meant to die. The only thing that's going to kill Barnes is Barnes. Ooh. And you need to know that. Ooh. He ain't saying it's like no joke either, bro. Yeah. He's saying he's for real. I can feel your He energy. believes it. Yeah. He believes this shit. Right then, you hear somebody go, huh. Camera pans to somebody literally sitting outside of the bunker. Barnes. Mm. He's got a drink. He looks in. Y'all boys talking about killing, huh? And then he comes down and he comes in the bunker. <laughs> y'all experts or something? Takes another sip of his jack. What y'all know about it? They're all just looking like, you know that feeling you got like, oh, I got caught oh, talking yeah. shit? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you know that? Fuck. Hey, all of our listeners, you know that feeling when you get caught talking shit and yeah. you're like, oh, fuck. fuck. Yeah. <laughs> and there's nothing, you can't lie and be like, oh, bro, you misheard me. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, no, he was, uh, he was, he talk was right that there. Shit, homie. You just, have to, you just have to be like, I accepted it. Yeah, I said it. I said it. That's who I am, yep. bitch. And he goes, uh, Barnes says, I'd like to hear you potheads, huh? What y'all think about, about killing. And he takes some of their weed and he smokes some of it. <sighs> He's like, is this, what is this why y'all do it, huh? Get away from reality. He hands it back to another guy. You can tell also the weed, no cough, no, you know. Yeah, no effect. Oh, goes, oh, this dude has smoked weed before. Uh -huh. And he goes, See, I don't need this shit. I am reality. Takes a drink. Just stares at them all. Elias was full of shit. A crusader. And when a man don't do what he's told, the machine breaks down. I won't allow it. In any of you. Not one. Y'all love Elias, huh? Y'all love him? Well, here I am, all by my lonesome. He's drunk. No one will know. Six of you against one of me. Come on, kill me. Looking at all of them. Do it. I shit on all of you. He walks out, and Chris goes, ah! And he gets up, and he takes his head. Bam! Smashes it on a pole. Bam! Bam! Barnes stops him. Fucking poof! Bam! Easily beats the shit out of him and then takes a knife and puts it right on his throat. And they go, Barnes, 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 stop! Barnes, don't do it! Don't do it, Barnes! You get 10 years for killing an illicit. You know that. Barnes, don't you do it. And Barnes just calmly right on top of him, too. Not even breathing hard. Mm -hmm. And Chris is still like, he's still so mad, you know? And he's got the knife right on his fucking eye. And he just goes, slices his cheek. And then gets up. And he, and he goes, <laughs> death, what y'all know about it? And then he leaves. You see what I say when I met the best actor, though? I know Defoe was acting. I ain't Defoe. Hey, I, you know, I, bro, I love both. Y'all, you was acting, Will. You was acting. But Behringer deserved the Oscar. Period. Who beat him? Who I got to see him? who beat both of them. Yeah, we got to But between the two? Mm -hmm. Behringer deserved it. I mean, I, this acting is un... I'm so scared of this man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. This is a scary fucking guy. Oh, yeah. Back to the voiceover. They sent us back to the next... Uh, they literally sent us back the next day. It felt like returning to the scene of a crime. And then you see them flying back over the village. They burn... Every, like, yeah, they went wow. right back into it, you know? Um, they, we were told we were going to apparently be bait. To lure out the entire regiment of the NVA, whatever, like whatever the Vietnam regiment they've been going out against this mm -hmm. whole time, mm -hmm. they have a plan. They're going to use their infantry as bait to lure them out, right? And that's why they're being sent. Okay. So they're all of them 
look extremely distraught about this. Oh, none of them are pumped? <laughs> to be bait? So you see soldiers, like some of the soldiers torturing a couple of the China, like the Vietnamese dudes trying to get information, but they won't give it up. Mm-hmm. And uh, apparently, because they're trying, apparently they find out they have, uh, the Vietnamese guys uh, uh, ambushed two battalions last night. Oh, wow. So that's why they're trying to get information. Okay. All right, and that's why they're trying to use their bait because they think they're all close. So let's fucking get them all out, see if we can kill them all. Right. All right. So they make the Ram- Ramanucci guy, this other guy uh, who was in Elias's squad, the one who was telling him that Barnes don't die. The only person that can kill Barnes is Barnes. Like that guy, like let right. it go. So they make him the, the next, the, like Elias, Elias's replacement. replacement. Okay. So now he's sergeant, you know what I mean, of, the, of that crew. Right. Okay. And then he looks at the guy, uh, the Lieutenant Wolf, who makes him, who gives him that job. And he goes, hey, man, I didn't ask for this fucking job. Like you tell him, he's like, I don't want this shit. Right. Hell no. Right. And then Lieutenant Wolf, you know, the bitch guy looks at him. And bro, this was good acting too. Completely distraught. He goes, look, man, I don't give a shit. I don't give a flying fuck anymore. And he leaves. He just walks off. Because the guy was complaining, like trying to complain to him, All like, right. hey, I don't want to do this with the whoop. And he was like, dude, dude I don't even care. Fuck you. I had, I got my own shit to deal with. You deal with your shit. <laughs> I, you were, I agreed with him on that one. Yeah. That was the one time I was like, hey, man, I don't, I'm not going back. Hey, yeah. little Duval style. I ain't going back and forth with you, niggas. Yeah. I'm living my best life. Yeah. <laughs> That's what that dude's trying to do. Uh, He's like, look, man, what do you mean you don't want to do this? I don't want to do this. Yeah, who wants to do this? Besides Barnes, who wants to be here? Yeah, I don't, Barnes doesn't want to be here. Barnes is just thriving here. He's just thri- he just yeah. wins here. Yeah, yeah, this is just his home court, which is good terrifying point. for him. That's a good point. <laughs> this is his home court. So Chris and the King dude, the black guy, you know, the King guy, mm-hmm. they're talking, right? And King's like, man, how come you don't write as much anymore? You thought you used to write your grandma like, I noticed you stopped doing it. And then Sheen looks at him. He's like, man, there's nothing. There is nobody. None of this matters, right? He's smoking weed. King looks at him. He's like, give me that, man. You got to stop smoking this shit. All you got to do, remember, keep your peck of hard, keep your nose dry. World keeps turning. You know what I mean? Like, right. just fucking, hey, relax. Yeah. And then he goes, man, Sheen goes, I just hate that people like Elias. I thought this was dope. But people like Elias in this world always get wasted. And people like Barnes always live on. If that ain't the realest shit. If that ain't the realest shit ever, bro. That's that's the truth, isn't it? Dude. And he's like, man, this world is fucking shit. And he goes, hey. And then fucking King goes, all you got to do is make it out of here. That's it. You make it out of here, the rest of your life is gravy. After this shit, it's gravy. <laughs> Just focus on that, right? Right, right then, O'Neal comes up to King and tells him, hey, Apparently, you only have two days left on your thing. They get, they gave you an extended leave. There's a chopper about to head back. Last chopper out. You're on it, King. He's like, are you fucking kidding me? And O'Neal's jealous because he only has like a couple days left too. Right. And he didn't. He was like, nope. You're out of here. Fucking lucky bastard. You know what I mean? And he looks. King's like, oh, shit. I got to go, brother. He's like, I love to keep talking to you, but I can't miss my chopper. And it, Sheen's like really happy for him. They yeah. hug. And he goes, remember, don't be a fool. You be smart out here. You be smart, all right. He's, a, he's a, ain't no such. He, he said he's ain't no such thing as a coward out here. Okay. Be smart. Okay. Oh, that's a good line. Cause it, like it is, but you. But in the way he's saying it, you know what he means. Yeah, yeah. Like, hey, bro, there's a coward, and then there's being smart. Right. Yeah. You, you gotta make the right. decision. Make the right decision. Mm-hmm. All right. Stay alive. Right. And he's fucking. He's like, and then Sheen's like, I gotta walk you out. Right. So they they start walking. Everyone's on his way. Everyone's like, back here. You know, they're happy for him because he's like. Obviously, it's like celebrating like a nigga getting out yeah, of jail. Yeah. Also, this is the day before this battle, so you're like, woo! Yeah. So, Junior, the junior guy, the other black guy, he's yelling about how the bottom of his feet are messed up. He can't walk. He can't walk. And he's showing him the bottom of his feet look all fucked up. Yeah. He can't walk, right? He says, I got to go home. You got to let me go home. You got to put me on that chopper. Please. Barnes is looking at him. Put your fucking boots on. <laughs> what you mean, man? I can't walk. Next time you try to pull some shit like this and fuck up your own feet so you can get out of here, I'll fucking court-martial your nigger ass myself. Junior goes, man, man, fuck you. Fuck you and just do it then. Y'all, y'all got the last out of Junior. I'm not fucking doing shit for y'all no more. I'm over this world, man. I'm sick of this. Like you tell like, break and I'm done. I'm done. And then Barnes goes, hey, hey, uh, it's a Johnny from Entourage. Hey, go grab that red caterpillar, those ones that bite. Let's put it in his shorts. Then we'll see if he can walk. All right. All right. All right. I'll fucking walk. I'll fucking walk. 
fuck? And he starts crying, and they just walk off like, yep, Damn. that's what we thought. Damn. This is hard. I'm not a big fan of war. <laughs> I get why this movie is such a big deal. The, they had, no one ever seen anything like this. This is re- this is like what? Yeah, this isn't even like yeah, a feel like good war movie. No heroes. This no. ain't no uh, like remember that one movie we saw Hacksaw Ridge. It was yeah. an awesome war movie. I mean, yeah. no bullshit. That's a phenomenal war movie. But it really is. War movie. It's a feel good war movie. This is a war movie. This is a movie about war. It's not about you know did we win? Oh this guy. Look at this hero. <laughs> no heroes. Not even really a lot of villains. No. Just no. war. Just war. I mean, one guy sort of became a villain. Yeah. 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 But, I mean, I guess a lot of the rapists, I mean, oh, man, that was a hard scene. Uh, yeah, those are villains. Yeah, so about that, you know, it's all hard. It's all hard. Uh, so Neil, right then, he goes up to Barnes and he goes, hey, Barnes, please let me get on that chopper, too. I've never asked you for anything as your number two. I've always been by your side. Please. I have three days away. I'm three days away from being done. You can give me this call. Please. There's room on the chopper. I got a bad feeling about this one. I don't know why, Sarge. I've never had a bad feeling, but right now I got a bad feeling. I don't know. For some reason, I feel like I'm not going to make it out. I, do you understand? I feel like I'm going to die. Please, Captain. Please. I've never asked you for anything. Barnes looks at him. Everyone has to die sometime, O'Neill. Move out. Barnes. The O'Neill's just. That would hurt the most because, like, damn, bro, why was, why was I even loyal to this guy? Yeah. He's not even my fucking friend. No. No. Should have placed my eggs in a different basket. In the Elias basket? The guy who would have totally been like, oh, dude, get the fuck on that chopper. Yeah. Definitely get on that chopper. Get out of here. Fuck it. This is, none of this matters. No. Yeah. So we see the king dude. He gets on the chopper. Chris is waving at him. And he's like, woo, goodbye, motherfucker. Yeah. Chopper flies off into the sunset. King gets away. Good for King. Good for King. You survived. You made it through the worst gauntlet of all time. Without a scratch, too. Yeah. Crazy. Not hurt. Crazy. Crazy. Like, actually, like, Sam was like, oh, my God, most of these guys are going to have PTSD. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. Most of those, most everybody from him had PTSD. He had a pretty good outlook on it. Because even his last talk to Sheen, he had a pretty good outlook. And then for him to be able to go yeah. with that outlook already, he actually might be able to get through it. Yeah. Whereas guys like the Forrest Whitaker guy or uh, Johnny Depp, uh, like the wounded ones. <sighs> I don't even know. Yeah. Back at, and the si- you go back home and the system don't care for you. Yeah. That, that, those ones uh, are like, man, man. I, I don't know. So cut to, we see uh, the Vietnam guys late at night. They're gearing up and they're setting their booby traps. So many of them, bro. So many of them. And as they're running and they're doing a bunch of shit, they set off a trip flare. Shootout starts. That's what I liked about the the fight scenes in this. You know, a lot of fight scenes in movies, you're like, oh, I had fight scene. Right. This is like fight scene. Oh shit! It's on. It's on top of me. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's like, but then again, like you tell all the shows, like, that's, oh, that's how war works. It, yeah, that's probably what. They it's like, oh, it's not like. some build up. Well, uh, I gave you it on the first. He gave you it on the first one with the bugs, right. but the rest of these have just sprung well, on. Well, you. especially this one because this was all guerrilla warfare, right? Where oh where yeah, yeah, like yeah. World War Two and all those movies are built up because they're all going to a certain place and all going to get there. We're going to meet up. Yeah. Yeah. This one, it's like, we're here, and they're here, but I don't know where they are. Yeah. Everyone's sort of all around. Yeah. Scary. So, the shootout starts at night. The new Elias, that guy, you know, Ramucci, he tells Chris, like, hey, you know, he tells him and another guy, Manny, don't come out of your holes. You guys are going to fucking stay here, and don't let anything get behind you. They're going to try to get through. Don't let a fucking single one of them get behind you. Let's go. Mm-hmm. Right? So, he runs off. So, they're holding their ground. They see one of their own running at them. Don't shoot! Don't shoot! And he fucking dives in their thing, right? Mm-hmm. And he tells them, like, hey, there are 100 coming this way. They fucking killed a bunch of our guys already. We got to run. We got to get the fuck out of here. Fuck this. And they're like, no, they told us to hold this. Stay here. Fuck this. Let's go. He takes off. Right. The black guy now looks at Chris, and he's like, man, fuck this shit. Let's go. And he's about to take off running, and Chris goes, just go. I'm staying. And he fucking keeps shooting out the bunker, right? And the black guy looks at him, and he's like, ah! and he fucking joins him. I lo- he's like I can't, you know what I mean. I can't I'm like my brother behind. I, and yo, he how bad does he want to? Yeah, because that that like oh, because that's just like the. I'm also mad at you that you're yeah. making me do this. Yeah, but but you, god this damn is what it, you've chosen and I've chosen to be on your side on this. I'll die with you. Yeah, even though I had a chance to not die, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, but this kind of goes against what that king guy said, right? 
Huh? No, there's nothing. You know what I mean? It's like, yo, you didn't Oh, this does go against what King Guy said a yeah, little bit. Yeah, you didn't take that to heart. Yep. Mm -hmm. So they out of nowhere, they start hearing this whistle. And then they hear a, a Vietnamese dude on the loudspeaker. You know, and then Sheen's looking, and he sees something kind of loading up. And he's like, get out of the hole. Go, go. They're going to blow it. Come on. He fucking drags the black out, and they fucking dive. Their hole gets blown up, right? So right then, as men come up to check on it, like to see if they got him, Chris runs back out, and he's like, you motherfuckers. Ah, and he kills like six of them. Da -da 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 -da. He runs up on one, smashes his skull, and his black dude, the black partner of his is watching, and finally he's like, da! and he comes out, and he joins them, and now they're both just fucking, da -da 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 -da. Ah! and then, bro, as they're shooting, Chris yells, it's fucking beautiful, as he's crying. Crazy thing to get him to say, Oliver oh, Stone. Oh wow! Or he said, and you just were like, yep, "Yeah, I like that energy." Yeah. Oh wow. That was that was the kind of shit people were saying. Oh wow. So, uh, as Johnny and the Junior dude, they're fighting together, right? right? The Junior dude fucking says, "Fuck this," and he leaves him. He takes off, mm -hmm. and the Johnny's like, "You gutless shit!" And as he's Junior's running, he's like running, looking behind him, like, huh, huh, "Bam!" And smack that into a tree, knocks himself out. Oof. All right. right as that happened, Johnny turns around and a Vietnamese guy goes, what? and puts the gun right in his mouth. His mouth like, he's like, oh, and he puts the gun in his mouth, poof, shoots his head off like that. Johnny deserved that. Yeah. Johnny from Entourage, this whole movie? Yeah. Okay. He's been the worst. Okay. He's just been. Yeah, he has been. He's yeah. Been, yeah. But so you not remember everything he's done? Yeah. I thought you for a second, you were like, I was like, you said Johnny. I was like, Johnny Depp? And then I'd be like, oh, shit. Johnny, no, John, Johnny, Johnny Depp's already in. Remember? Yeah, yeah. He got taken away. Yeah, no, he got uh, taken no, away. I'm sorry. Uh, I Johnny from Entourage. That's why I was really confused. I was no, like, Johnny from Entourage right. gets blown in the mouth. Okay. All right. Yeah. He deserves it. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder why. Oh, God. O'Neal. So right then, uh, they walk up to Junior, who's already knocked out, and they just stab him to death. Mm -hmm. The Vietnamese guys. <laughs> He's, he dies. As they're coming up on O'Neill's bunker, he literally takes dead bodies of the Vietnamese guys around him and just fucking covers himself up. And they walk right by him. Good for O'Neill. I kind of I didn't want him to live. You didn't Good. want Dr. You wanted Dr. Cox to live. I know you wanted Dr. Cox to live. Because yeah. even though he was dudes number two, you're like, oh, I hope he lives. Yeah, I hope he lives. So we have you see it in the main base, their main camp. Yeah. Right? Remember with the guy who told him, like, hey, when this is all done. If you fucked up, you're gonna go to jail. That guy, the main captain, him. Yeah. So they're at his base. You see, he see. They even see these two Vietnamese guys fucking running onto the camp, screaming. Ah! One guy gets shot dead. Another guy gets into another camp. Suicide blows himself up. And now they're in the camp. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So now there's a full on in there in America's main base camp. Okay. Full on war there now. Okay, crazy. So it's full on, right? Uh, the bitch boss. Calls that guy. He goes, hey, we have to pull back to the main camp. We're, we're, we're getting out number. We have nowhere to go. And then he goes, pull back where, Lieutenant? Our base is completely being overrun. You will stay. And he goes, no, I can't. They're going to kill us. You will stay and you will fight. That's an order. And he hangs up on him. And now you can tell that Lieutenant's like, huh? Because he's just like, what? I'm dead. I'm dead. Oh, I'm dead. So the leader dude, he calls and says, hey, air raid on my position. And they're like, are you sure, Captain? He goes, you have to now. This is my call. This is Captain whatever. whatever. You air raid my position now. Because he's like, this is it. Right. We got like, to kill him. Right? So we see Barnes. He's killing a bunch of dudes. Da -da 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 and then he gets shot in the legs. And he falls. Chris sees this. And he goes to grab Barnes and he helps him. And he turns him over in slow-mo. Barnes hits him. Right? And he falls. And then Barnes gets on top of him. And he lifts something up to stab him. And then, you know, Chris is like, why? Like this in slow motion. And Barnes sees him. And he still starts coming down anyway. And then right then, the air raid that he called, you hear, boom, 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 and just that fire like of the whole tree line. It all goes to black. What the fuck? The next morning. Jesus Christ. It's early in the morning. You hear birds. It's bright. Chris wakes up. He's all fucked up. His body's kind of burnt and shit. He looks over. He sees a deer literally right next to him. just eating, looking at him. He pulls himself up and he starts kind of limp walking. Dead bodies everywhere. And then you see his eyes. He sees something. And he locks in. He keeps walking. And then he... Grabs a Vietnamese, like a gun out of a dead Vietnamese guy's hand, cocks it, keeps walking. 
He holds up his gun. Right? You see Barnes, the camera kind of like, you don't see what he's looking at. Then you see the camera pan up to Barnes, who's like just crawling. He's all fucked up. And then he turns himself over. And he sees Chris and he goes, get the medic. Go. Get the medic, boy, now. Chris just stares at him cold with the gun hold up. The gun still held up. And then Barnes just goes, do it. Bow, bow, bow. Three in Barnes' chest. Barnes dies. So later that day, they have a tank come through the next morning. Like the, actually, oh this is the next God. day. The next morning, they have a tank come through yeah. with different troops, right? And they're looking for all the wounded. They grab Chris, who's still alive. And they, you know, uh, they start like rounding up all the alive guys they can and all the mm-hmm. dead bodies, too, that are theirs. You remember the one guy that Chris was in, the, the black guy who stayed for him? Right. He's still alive. Ooh. As, Ooh, life to, is Mario Kart. as he sees they're about to come get him, he takes a knife and goes, Shh, uh, right? And then, uh, stabs himself. You know why he does this. Yeah, yeah to get out. Yeah. Yeah. I, I get it. Okay. I get it. I get it completely. Hey, hey, you made the decision to stay. I respect this decision. Hey, bro. I, hey, I'm not doing it twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That was him going, hey, I had a war. I did my experience. I walked out with a stab leg. Yeah. That's my story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm never changing it. No one will ever. Bro, that's some shit you don't even tell your wife, fool. Yeah, it's no. like, nigga, I'll take that one to the grave that, with me. That, that one is a secret. And it's like, I'm okay. I'm not like letting it. It don't eat me up. Right. It's just for me. Yeah. It's for me. And I'll die with it. And it's okay. No one will ever know ever in the history of time. Treat yourself. Treat yourself. Treat yourself. We just high five the guy stabbing himself to get out of the Vietnam War. Hey, you got to do what you got to do, you know. So O'Neal finally crawls out the bodies, right? Mm-hmm. And then they like people help him up. And he goes, and he looks at him, he lies. And they go, What happened? He goes, Those faggots, they all left me here to die. Right? Like nobody helped me. Yeah. You know? But he's still fine. Right. Right. So cut back to the main camp. They're seeing they're throwing all the dead, like gook bodies in a pile so they mm-hmm. can burn them. And you see uh Chris getting carried off in a helicopter. Mm-hmm. He's just like in a helicopter and he's looking at like well, he's getting carried off, right? In a in a stretcher and he's looking at everything. And then he, him and Francis, they lay, like, him and the black dude, the, mm-hmm. that's, that's his name, Francis, the one who came back for him, the black guy. Yeah. So yes. they're, they're laying down next to each other, the one who stabbed himself. And he, they, the black dude looks at him, and he goes, hey, dig it. What up, Chris? We're going home, baby. I'll see you in the hospital. We're going to get high. <laughs> We're going home. And they carry him off into the chopper. He's so happy. Like, and Chris is just smiling, like, yeah. hell yeah. Like, We're going home. I love that, right? Mm-hmm. So right then. The big boss, the big, big boss, not Lieutenant Wolf, but the big, big boss, he, he, he lived through this. Right. The one who called the airstrike on himself. Yeah. He comes up to O'Neill and tells him, you know, great job with you. Congratulations, son. You're now the, you now have the entire second platoon. They're yours. And he's like, yes, sir. Damn. Damn. He got fucked. He got fucked. He got promoted. Fuck. He got promoted. Fuck. I'm sorry, Dr. Cox. I'm sorry. So he doesn't die in this, but uh, he might as well have. <laughs> His face did. Yeah. And that like when he when the cause the other dude like says it. You have to, also the other dude doesn't say it like it's promotion. He says it like, here you well, uh, you're the luck. new Barnes. Good luck, bitch. <laughs> That's how he said it. Yep. So the uh they put Chris on the chopper and uh like he, he they start like he starts flying off and he looks down and you remember the dude who replaced Elias? Yes. He's still alive too. Reverend okay. Duchy, he makes it out, right? And he's got a staff, the one that they were smoking a lot of weed out of, right? Mm-hmm. He's holding that up and he's got all like his hippie shit on his head, and he looks at Chris and he goes, <laughs> and Chris just goes, <laughs> and they just like stare at each other for a while, right? Voiceover as the chopper flies off. I think now, looking back, we really just fought ourselves. But the war is over for me now. But it will always be here. It, was always, it will always be here with me for the rest of my days. So will Elias. So will Barnes. There are times I felt like a child of those two fathers. Who? For those who made it out of this, we have to teach and try the rest of our lives to find the goodness and the meaning in this life. Platoon.
dedicated to the men who fought and died in the Vietnam War. Beautiful ending. Beautiful ending. Holy fuck. It's one of the best movies ever done. Holy I mean, fuck. Ranked, but I also agree. Yeah. Holy fuck. It's the best war movie. As far as uh, closest, out of all the war movies I've seen, as far as closest representation. Not even, and, and I say that, and I mean it's not even close. Fuck. Because you've seen uh, every movie of the day, just the, the effects and the graphics and right. just the way they look. And it's awesome. I'm not saying I like 1917. Yeah, so it's fucking movie. amazing. Yeah. It, it looks great. But it's just like it's shot with 4K cameras. Right. This is like gritty. Oof. Oof. Uh. He shot a gorilla style, dog. He, I mean, he did, too. There's no, there's no set. There's no lighting. There's no any of that. This looks real. Oh, man. I don't even know. How you feel, buddy? Like, my mind's been fucked. What'd you think of the movie? Like, what it was about? I thought it was a good... I thought it was... Like, the storyline. Yeah, Take yeah, the, yeah, war, the, the, the war and the just fighting. The one platoon, just the politics and the, all that and the different character... Or the different sort of character traits they all had. I thought it was really well done. Yeah. yeah but the writing was incredible. There were some lines that are... I had goosebumps the last lines, and I didn't see it. Who's your favorite? I mean, I liked Elias. Obviously, I like Dr. Cox. Dr. Cox is great. I like Dr. That's Cox. A number, he's a crazy, it's an interesting play on a number two. Mm-hmm. Those, are, those are my two favorites. How do you feel about Barnes? And then Barnes just... Is, Barnes, I liked and I ended up hating him. When he shoots Elias, you yeah, hate him. Oh, I man. Hate I mean, it, it turns visceral. Yeah. That's like a intense hate, probably. Which is weird because it, even he kills a Vietnamese woman, innocent Vietnamese woman. Yeah. And, and I but, hate him. I hate him, but I, you, you the, Elias is there, so you do feel like there's a form of justice there. The form of justice and like... And, like, uh, there is that fucked up thought of, like, okay, I can sort of get how under in, under war your brain can get to that place. And, I mean, I guess what that's what the Elias murder is. Like, under war your brain can get, the place, get to that place, too. But, like, yo, that was your, like, own teammate. That was your brother. Yeah. That was not about the war. That was about protecting No, that was your protecting ass. your ass. Yeah. That's why, that's why it's weak. Yeah. That's why it's weak. This is, yeah. Because Elias didn't fucking kill you like he could have. No. By the way, he could have easily killed you, bro. He said, I'm going to fucking do the right thing. I'm going to turn you in. Right. Because that's what the right thing That's what you do to your brother. I'm not going to fucking kill you. I'm going to turn you in. I'm not going to shoot you in your back. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, oh, man. What a. what a. But you knew Barnes was on his way to kill him when he told everybody else to go. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's why Chris didn't want to go. He knew. Yeah. He knew. Something was up. He was like, why would he want no one to go get him but himself? He wants to kill him. Save his ass. That's the, such a weak move from a strong man. Very strong man, though. <sighs> Very weak move. Well, amazing movie. I love this movie. I have some time to watch it. Shout out to all our vets who listen to this. We fucking shout love out. you guys, man. Yeah, really. And shout out to all the Asian people, dude. All our Asian gooky gooks yeah. that listen to this podcast. A gooky gooky gooky. I love you too, you little gook face. All right. Well, you know. Ding dong, bing bong. Okay. Ding, 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 ding. Okay. Well, I guess if you dig the hole so far deep, you can't get canceled. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. See you guys soon.